dangerous and detrimental to regional peace and stability. We express our strong dissatisfaction. We urge the U.S. to strictly abide by international law and international rules and refrain from taking any risky and provocative actions. China will continue to closely monitor the relevant area and take the necessary and appropriate measure to prevent harm to the safety of China's islands and reefs, as well as any sea and air accidents. A Pentagon spokesman called the mission routine and said such flights occurred every few days. Colonel Steve Warren said the Poseidon had not gone within the 12-mile territorial limits that China claims around the artificial islands, but said this could happen in the future. The U.S. stance reflects the fact that while it does not recognize Chinese territorial limits around reclaimed land, it wants to avoid escalating the issue further than necessary. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Researchers at the University of Washington report that they have successfully trained seven-year-old chimpanzee Makoko to do all of the tasks necessary to conduct a three-year study on primates. According to the scientists, Makoko has efficiently learned to turn in thorough analyses of behavior in chimpanzees, fill out all of the necessary paperwork to ensure compliance with the Animal Welfare Act, and even apply for supplemental grant funding from the National Institutes of Health. Sources within your office reported today that the guy on the third floor with two computers computer screens on his desk is not f***ing around. Co-workers said that the man currently working with at least three programs open on each screen was absolutely tearing it up, with sources adding that watching the man run a group video chat while dragging two separate Google documents to his second screen was like something out of f***ing Minority Report or something. Jesus, he's just dragging things from one screen to the other like it's nothing. He's going balls to the wall over there. Christ, man, I don't think he's blinked in three minutes. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're doing the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, we've got plenty of time for you to call in. Bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. Always, we bring stuff to the table that you might be interested in discussing as well, including tonight our uh, opening story that the FBI has admitted that apparently they haven't stopped any terrorism with their powers granted to them by the Patriot Act, which is a portion of it, as I understand it, is up for possible renewal right now. Well, and yeah. Ian and Mark in the studio with you. Mark, what were you going to say about that? Yeah. So, uh, what at first I'd say that they'd say that no major cra- cases have been cracked with the Patriot Act. Um, the, you know, I can't find anything that uh, they can really point to, but they're just saying no major cases. Okay. So that's where we're going to start here tonight. Uh, it, by major cases, that would include terrorism, right? Like, because <laughs> right. terrorism is pretty major generally when it happens. And according to the story that I had one of, I had a variant on this. I'm not sure where yours is from. Mine's from CounterCurrentNews.com. Uh, Mine's from the Washington Times. Let's go with yours uh, on this one then, uh, because that seems like pretty big news to me. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty big. From uh, Maggie Yarbara. It's uh, FBI agents can't point to any major terrorism cases they've cracked thanks to the key snooping powers in the Patriot Act. And the Justice Department's inspector general said in a report Thursday that uh, complicated efforts to keep key parts of the law operating. Inspector General Michael E. Horwitz said that between 2004 and 2009, the FBI FBI tripled its use of bulk collection under Section 215. This is the big section. This is essentially what's being removed from the Patriot Act and the Freedom Act. Um, What's being removed? It's under... Um, it could be removed, right? Like, it's not a done deal, is it? It's not a done deal. This is what's being removed. Uh, The Act is a bill... The Freedom okay. Act is a bill at this point. Uh-huh. You know, they've it got all these names, got it. and it can be very difficult to, uh, you know, make it clear as to what uh, these things mean. And that's kind of what my point is on this Memorial Day weekend. Um, one of the things I want to know is, is that, you know, uh, when we look at things called the Patriot Act and the Freedom Act, which really don't seem to have a lot to do with, pay- well, at least the Freedom Act doesn't have that much to do with freedom, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um So, you know, the Patriot Act certainly was passed to some extent due to people's patriotism, I guess. So I suppose it's a good term like that. But it kind of says that if you don't like your freedoms, you're a bad patriot. Does it mean that? You know, like if you want to keep your keep certain amounts of your stuff private, if you don't like the government collecting 
all of your phone call data, you're you're bad American. Well, the Patriot's just an acronym, and I don't remember what it stands for. It's the USA Patriot Act. Yes, but uniting, it's, strengthening, it's strength, a backronym. strengthening America. No, no, no. They didn't just come up with a name of an act and then, yeah. oh, look at this. The first letters all come out to USA no, they Patriot. They wanted Act. It to say Patriot. That's why we they... call that a backronym, uh-huh. and it's because they, you know, they have this term, and they're they're trying to do something with these terms, right? Like they're trying to get a message across, and the message is is that that your freedoms, like freedom and patriotism, really are antithetical. That, um, you know, that's fr- going to be upsetting to a lot of people, Mark. What do you mean by that? Freedom well, and patriotism are antithetical. Because some people say that, you know, the United States, they are patriotic for the United States because it's a free place. And so to them, patriotism is the celebration of freedom. Well, then they should be able to look at, show me some charts um, that are contrary to the Fraser Institute's Free the World chart and the Heritage Foundation's um, economic freedom charts and the other charts of social freedoms and things like that. They should be able to show me some charts that show the United States getting more free as compared to other nations around the world. Because the evidence is the United States is becoming less free as as compared to um, other nations around the world. It's more difficult to sort of quantify social freedoms, Mm. I'll admit. And certainly we have the right to complain, right? Like we're getting on the radio and we're complaining about it. But when you look at sort of financial freedoms, um, you know, fiscal freedoms and things like that, it's obvious. The United States isn't even in the top 10 on the Heritage Foundation's Mm -hmm. uh, chart. And and it hasn't been for a while. Yeah, it's, it's been sliding down. It's going to get farther and farther. I don't have any evidence. But, Mark, what if you wave a flag harder? Then we'll get more free, right? <laughs> Obviously, waving flags harder doesn't do any good. <laughs> Going and fighting in foreign countries for that flag mm-hmm. don't do anything to increase freedoms here. Freedoms here have to do with the message that's sent to politicians. And the message sent to politicians is that as long as we're sufficiently scared— that we will give up more of our freedoms. Mm. Now, the politicians, I believe, benefit from this because, you know, with a, with a lack of freedom, they can hand over sweet government deals to their cronies. This is how it was done uh, by the king of, kings around Europe, is, is they gave out all the licenses for anybody who was allowed to do business. You weren't allowed to do business without a license. Well, this is what it's becoming like more and more in the Western world. And it's because people are scared. They're scared of the bad things that might happen. One thing I can assure you of is is that the United States government will take money from you. You're scared of, uh, you know, thieves and terrorists and bad people. Well, the federal government is certainly going to steal money from you this year. Right? Like, that's what they do. Yeah. Well, they're going to extort it from you. Extort it from you. Yeah. If you you don't pay them, they will probably do something bad to you. They might hurt you, put you in a jail cell, or something like that. Possibly kill you. In many cases, it's not for much. Like, whatever defense the United States needs... It's probably got all the equipment that it needs for a very long time. You I mean be- defense against, like, attacking foes, that kind of thing? Well, what else is the federal government supposed to do? I mean, really, what is the federal government supposed to do except sort of make I'll sure— Take the- care of you from cradle to grave, apparently. <laughs> make sure the states don't fight with each other. And- Are you talking about constitutionally? That's what I'm— They yeah. wrote a document. There are rules to the game. I didn't create the game. Somebody told me there were rules, and they broke all of them. Well, somebody lied to you because the rules have been broken since day one, haven't they? I mean, the, you know, you could argue that the government was more constitutional in the beginning. It certainly has strayed further, but, uh, you know, George Washington, didn't he lead the— uh, the fight against the, the Whiskey Rebellion or something Yeah, like that? It's, it is funny that a guy who led a rebellion then went and quashed another one. He didn't lead it. He sent George Lighthouse Lee, uh, ah, okay. Robert E. Lee's father or grandfather. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. He told sure. him to do it, though. Yeah, he was yeah. in charge. He was the uh, chief executive yeah. at the time. and That would make him the leader. I mean, he yeah, wasn't it, leading the troops yep. directly into battle, I guess. Is sure. What you mean. That's true. Yeah, so— there's nothing new there, right? Like the government's been breaking its own rules since day number one. They've, they, you know, violated the spirit of the Constitution probably the before the ink was even dry. Backers say the Patriot Act powers are critical and must be kept intact, particularly with the spread of the threat of terrorists. Do you hear the fear? Patriot, oh, yeah. Patriot and th- terrorist used in the same sentence. Both, op- But opponents have uh, doubted the efficacy of uh, Section 215, particularly when it was used to justify bulk data collection, such as in the case of the National Security Agency's phone metadata program, revealed in leaks from the former government contractor Edward Snowden. Now, recently, uh, federal courts have ruled that that Section 215 was unconstitutional anyway. 
it was illegal. Uh, as I understood it, the way it was being used was unconstitutional. Yeah, that's correct. You're right. Um, that the, the NSA's implementation of 215 right. was illegal. Um, and uh, but I mean, you know, it's it's what do you do about things like this? About Section 215, or well, what, what do you do when when you're when the NSA, when the federal government breaks the federal government's rules? Mm. Who goes to jail? No, when, no one will. When you break the federal government's rules, you go away into a dark cell for a long time. That's right. You can believe if they could get their claws into Edward Snowden, who revealed that they were doing illegal stuff. Right. Had it not been for Edward Snowden, it would still be going on. And uh, ostensibly, it could still be going on, and right? And people call know. him a bad American all the time. He's, he's a, a hero. He's a bad patriot. And I just... I want to know what patriotism is. Apparently, Here it's going Memorial, along with the government, everything they say and do. I th- I don't know if it is that, but it has become it has it effectively is that right? Like politicians skulk about in the shadow of the flag constantly. Look at the flag waving; it's really important. Mm-hmm. And then they do what they want, and there's really nothing you can do when you say the Pledge of Allegiance. It's very clear that you're saying it to the republic for which it stands. A republic is a form of government, right? That's our government. The claim is is that you're. You know, pledging allegiance to the government in there. They do all kinds of illegal things all the time, and they get no, there's no accountability for it. And I just, I, I want to know can patriotism go too far? I want to know what it is. I want to know um, who benefits. When we look at patriotism, who benefits from it? Because I don't know if it's necessarily you and me. Follow the money. We'll come back with more here in moments. 855-450-FREE. You want to answer Mark's questions, the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. Your thoughts on patriotism. Is there any value to it? There's more on the way here, and you can join us on Skype as well. It's Skype username lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. 
Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Was the money that good? This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. We're talking about the news about the FBI admitting that their Patriot Act, their precious Patriot Act, with all the powers and the spying and everything that it has approved over the last decade plus, has done zero to actually help them stop any kind of terrorism. So that is uh, what sort of was the news that spawned a conversation, which led to a lot of questions on your part, Mark. You were asking folks about patriotism because it certainly it's called is called the Patriot Act for a yeah, reason and and people will you know kind of cheer on anything that seems patriotic to them oh yeah we need to, this thing to protect us from all those evil people out there but when it seems to me like most of the bad people that we really need to be concerned about are in the US federal government and state governments that's where my concern lies those are the people who are regularly threatening uh, the people that I love and the people that I care about with violence if they don't go along with it is going along with everything the government says that you should do, that you have to do, is that patriotism? Just doing what you're told? Is that patriotic? And uh, you asked a few other questions, Mark. Can patriotism go too far? Who benefits from patriotism? And what is really, I, one of the questions I had was, what's the value of it? That was what I was told, you know, like when, when I was taught critical thinking, one of the first things I was taught was follow the money. And with anything, you should follow the money, right? Like when it comes to patriotism, Who's benefiting? Who gets the money from patriotism? Because there's a lot of it out there. I suppose there's some company that's companies that sell flags and stuff like that that make a little bit. They make them in China or whatever, mm -hmm. and they bring them over here, and then they say that they're you know important or whatever, and they certainly make some money. But I think that it really it's a social currency is mostly what patriotism is, um, because people don't join up for the military for the pay, right? You know, in a lot of cases, folks that join the military are, you know, they're signing up for less than minimum wage. They're doing it for their country. They're doing it for supposedly. their country. They're doing it for uh, college. Some they're do doing it so they can murder people legally. There are a few people who are uh, certainly sociopaths that, uh, you know, go in there for that purpose. I want to go to your calls and thoughts here. But first, uh, speaking of currency, Mark, if you want to get some Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin, you can go to ExpressCoin.com. Maybe you've heard about Bitcoin, the uh, world's currency, this international decentralized currency that's not issued by any government or any bank. It's sort of taking the world by storm. It's an amazing thing. Uh, if you haven't yet learned about Bitcoin, you can take a moment to go to WeUseCoins.com. They've got some great info there about it. But when you're ready to get Bitcoin, go with ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, it's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And over at ExpressCoin.com, they are a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrency with a money order or a check at expresscoin.com and you can do it from your smartphone they've got an app go grab that at expresscoin.com and use coupon code ftl you'll get up to forty dollars worth of cryptocurrency with no transfer fee at all by using code ftl like free talk live that's ftl at expresscoin.com let's go to your calls and thoughts aaron is listening in indianapolis to wibc hello aaron uh 
Good evening. Thank you for taking my call. Good evening, Aaron. Are you actually listening on the radio tonight? Because I didn't think we started in Indy until 8 o'clock. Oh, well, actually, I'm listening on the uh, website right now. I was trying to give uh, a little bit of uh, advertisement. For IBC? Gotcha. For WIBC. Oh, like they need it. They're giant. Yeah, it's a great station. It's <laughs> a huge. Well, I mean, advertising as far as you guys go. Thank oh, you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight, Aaron. Okay. Well, I was... I guess I had a question. I, obviously, anyone who's listened to you guys for any period of time know you guys don't have much use for the current U.S. federal government. But I was wondering if in the history of the U.S. government, like maybe with the founders or any presidents prior to the current era, that you guys actually liked or admired or thought that their philosophical uh, political philosophy fell in line with uh, what you guys uh, believe now. Well, I, I think that it would be very difficult um, for – I mean, many of the ideas that we have are kind of new historically. They're old and new at the same time. So, um, you know, the, the ideas of voluntarism really haven't been fleshed out for – quite for very long but when you look at um you know some of the writings of Locke and 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 uh you know to Tocqueville and and a few of these uh, I'm probably saying all these things wrong I've read them I, I haven't heard the names <laughs> um you know you'll see these ideas uh, have been around for for a bit of time but they haven't sort of been very solid so you know I like Calvin Coolidge I like Taft. I like, um, you know, Thomas Jefferson. I like um, Andrew Jackson until you start talking about uh, racism. Um, you know, and, and that's, frankly, you know, many of the uh, the founders have a lot of problems when it, when it came to, uh, you know, racial tensions and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, I have, uh, I certainly look at politicians of the past and, and, and I like some of them, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, you know, you really can't be in charge of uh, the federal government and still, uh, you know, be on board with voluntarism. Yeah. Okay, well, I was just kind of curious about that since uh, I'm not really familiar with a lot of the foundational philosophers or whatever with uh, what you guys discuss. on. I mean, obviously you guys have some ideas that you've articulated yourselves, but, you know, as uh, – Usually everything's based upon someone else's, you know, previous ideas or whatever. Oh, and yeah, I think absolutely. There's uh, There are a lot of people who have advocated similar ideas in the past. I wouldn't really say these are new ideas necessarily. Maybe the term voluntarism is well, fairly Well, putting it all new. together, being new? Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I can't say I'm I'm completely intimately familiar with all of the various philosophers of the past. I, I know what I like, and I like the idea of human beings interacting with each other based on consent. As far as political figures go, I can't say that there are any, there's anyone in the United States government uh, at, at any point in the past who would have uh, been aligned with that particular viewpoint. I mean, just by nature of the fact that people going into government usually means that government is attracting the people who are seeking power over others, not the people like, you know, the Ron Pauls of the world, of which there's only one. Uh, but, you know, those kind of people don't tend to seek government because they're doing busy things. You know things with their lives and being productive. Yeah, it's really difficult to get uh, enough money to be able to spend your time trying to s preach the ideas of liberty to other folks. And Aaron, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Let's go to Will. He's in Denver, Colorado. Will, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hi. Hey, Will. What did the founding fathers found? What does that mean? What, what's the question? Can you expound on that a little bit? Well. The people we traditionally call the founding fathers, the name implies that they founded something. I guess the government? The people they call themselves the government, they founded those people? Well, they, um, they wrote some documents and they put together an organization. And organizations are definitely organizations of people. I don't think they founded people, no. That answer your question, Will? Thanks for the call. Uh, Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Generally, when you call a talk show, you want to actually talk. You know, Hopefully, well, you have something that you want to say. Uh, you know, he probably didn't want to rush his answer. Um, a lot of people p put forth this idea that government is not real. Um, but I think organizations are real in the sense that they exist in language and they exist in writing, um, which writing, I guess, is uh, language. Um, and so, 
you know, I mean, if you say that the government isn't real, you'd have to say that uh, you know, my, my mother is a founding member of the Sarasota Obedience Training Club where they uh, train dogs. You'd have to say the SOTC, which is this very old organization. Um, she's also a, uh, a voting member of the uh, American Kennel Club. You'd have to say the AKC doesn't exist. Well, it does and it doesn't. My marriage is a agreement on a piece of paper. I mean, does my marriage exist? I tell you, that lady expects me to be home at night. Well, you know, it's a, that's a very subtle point, and, uh, you know, the idea, I guess, would be that those things are ideas and they don't physically exist, but obviously people respect ideas and they pretend like they do. 855-450-FREE. Measles is activating on a mass scale, now due to the vaccines and iron poisoning. All symptoms, disease, and deaths are due to measles and iron, not just rash and flu-like symptoms, as the officials claim. Measles requires a host with iron to replicate. Iron intake is at an unprecedented level. Deaths and hospitalization are set to soar now in 2015. This is the extermination plan, people. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. Unveilingthem.com. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. A study finds that Americans need six hours of uninterrupted sleep at work in order to leave the office feeling refreshed and alert. Leading endocrinologists told reporters that more and more people are pulling all-dayers and drinking coffee just to keep themselves awake for meetings and conference calls. And that in order to be properly rested, employees should arrive at work, check their email for a few hours, and be sound asleep by 11.30 a.m. at the very latest. In order for the body to properly function, adults need to make sure that they're well-rested and they're not staying up too late at work. The Lord our God, divine creator and ruler of the universe, announced Wednesday that he does not consider human beings his most impressive creation, saying instead that mountains are categorically superior in every way. Claiming that mankind was a good creation and worthy of praise, the deity explained that human beings simply pale in comparison to the slopes, valleys, and sheer magnitude of a snow-capped 20,000-foot mountain, and that while all humans eventually grow old and die, mountains last forever. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 
It's a live Saturday edition of the program. We're talking about patriotism. What is it even valuable for? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Can it go too far? And who benefits from patriotism? If you want to answer any of those questions, we're here for you. Uh, 855-450-FREE. Also, Skype in at username lrn.fm with you in studio. You've got Ian here. And Mark. Also, Mark, we just uh, this week had our third wine tasting uh, with Cameron Hughes Wine, and it was well attended. A lot of people came out and enjoyed uh, a couple of different wines, including uh, the Pinot, I believe. Yeah, the Pinot um, was uh, was a big hit. Uh, but um, I want what I want you to do is go to Cameron Hughes Wines. It's chwine. Dot com, and there's a microphone in the upper left-hand corner. Mm-hmm. Um, click on that and enter coupon code FTL. Because what when you go there, what you'll find is that Cameron Hughes buys wines from around the world and mostly around Napa Valley, you know, that general vicinity. And so he takes these high-end wines, some of them as high as 90 points. And as a matter of fact, uh, two of his cabs recently were rated over 90 points by Wine Spectator, mm-hmm. just so you know. Um, these are high-end wines. They're really great, but they're priced so that you can enjoy them at a barbecue. Yeah, I mean, these are $70 to $100 wines priced at $10 to $30. We just had uh, we were just advertising the Pinot, which was at twelve dollars and fifty cents. That's a you know this is sort of a normal price for a bottle of wine, but these are the high end wines. Cameron Hughes goes searches the world in order to bring them to you. Now they aren't labeled from the winery they come from because that would sort of defeat the purpose from the winery standpoint of uh, you know selling them to Cameron because they'd rather dump it than <laughs> than give you than let you know which winery it came from. The winery would rather have it uh, dumped than, you know, to say that they they sell their overages for less. So that's what Cameron Hughes' whole business model is. And it's a fantastic one. And we have done so well uh, with Cameron Hughes that, uh, you know, he just keeps coming back. So if you've been thinking about it, at least you'll you can be comforted in the idea that many 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 of our listeners have tried Cameron Hughes over at chwine.com and been very happy. I was looking here, uh, Mark. They've they've changed up some of the exclusive deals on once you put in code FTL, and yep. that uh, Garnacha that we tried on Thursday night is there now. At oh, is the, it? Is the it top up now? left of the the page? Okay, that's a ten dollar bottle of wine. Really? Yeah, and it says it was sourced from Europe. So I don't know how you can get wine all the way over from Europe and sell it here for ten dollars, but he's managing to do it and give you is free shipping still going on. Yeah, you get free shipping with coupon code FTL, and that's a big deal when you're shipping liquids, yeah, you know. Um, and that garnacha, that would be really good with, uh, you know, something that's very flavorful. Red meat that's very flavorful. Venison came to mind when I was tasting it. Uh, maybe a really uh, strong cheese. Yeah, I polished off that bottle. Did you? Good. good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a half a glass of each. <laughs> chwine.com they're fantastic you will not be sorry uh, you go there you enter coupon code F- I'm sorry you click on the microphone in the upper left enter coupon code FTL you'll get free shipping and 20% off select wines so tell us how you feel about patriotism what is the benefit of it and who- well, do you feel cheated in many ways because I mean so many of us this is what we were taught is patriotism and I still feel it right like I see the I flag don't. fluttering and uh, the fa 18s flying over the football games and the you know the the, the, the I'm disgusted by it the personally. eagle um uh, you know with the the star spangled banner playing underneath it actually I prefer America the beautiful I think it's a superior song but uh, I mean you know like I get it but one of the concerns that I have, a deep and abiding concern that I have, is is that these feelings of patriotism that 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 we were taught, that we were inculcated with, you weren't mm, born yeah. with this stuff. Nope. Um, that we were taught have been used and abused for a very long time by an, a group of sort of powerful elites for their own purposes. And now when I when people say powerful elites, oftentimes I'm not talking about skulking, you know, guys in suits smoking cigars. I'm talking about your elected officials. I mean, you know, they they have their reasons for fighting their these wars that in many cases have nothing to do with you. Maybe it's payoffs for the military industrial complex. Maybe it's uh, resources that they want to get a hold of you know maybe uh, you know whatever whatever the reasons are if you can imagine that they just want that the military industrial complex just wants to sell more missiles and bullets and stuff like that mm. how they might sacrifice young people your children just to be able to sell bombs yeah. and bullets for what I mean, purpose? it's disgusting for the good of what let's go to straight razor in texas you're on free talk live listening via tune in hey straight razor 
Good evening, gentlemen. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Welcome, so sir. I wanted to speak about patriotism um, and how the patriots you see today are not actually patriotic. Um, the most patriotic people I know are actually libertarian, not because they support a flag or the United States government, because they don't. They support the idea of freedom and liberty. That's truly patriotic, because whenever you're looking at the actual definition, it says uh, basically like virtuous support of one's country. So this country was intended, and of course this is all opinion, intended to be a, a free place. Now, just because the government has decided to thwart that intention does not mean that that intention was not good and that it is wrong to support that idea. So, but therefore, patriotism also would mean that if you were uh, of North Korean descent or, you know, live in North Korea, patriotism would be support for the, uh, you know, Kim Jong-un and his family and the dictatorship there. Uh, so patriotism doesn't necessarily mean, you know, belief in freedom. It just means going along with what the government wants. Absolutely. Well, the if you go to, in the definition, virtuous is, you know, moral um, and how can you say that it's moral to imprison people or to tell them that they can't do something just because you don't like it? So that's kind of – now, like I said, today things have gotten way out of control because patriotism really has nothing to do with a piece of cloth. Um, so There's also, also nothing in the definition of patriotism that specifies that it has anything to do with the origins of the country. It just simply says I'm, – I'm at dictionary.com – devoted love, support, and defense of one's country – uh, semicolon national loyalty. So to be a patriot by that definition would mean that going along with being loyal to the nation no matter what. So no matter which direction you know the the country changes as far as its political uh, leaders take it, uh, patriotism would be going along to get along. Yeah, I mean, well, you really I, kind I of you, you wonder. I mean, can a patriot even disagree with the government in any way, shape, or form? Not by this definition. If you're loyal, well, you couldn't I, possibly disagree. Well, I think if you're going, yeah, but you're you're you have loyalty with uh, a moral background to it. It's kind of the way I look at it. So, um, I support America until they become unmoral, and then I don't support those parts, and I try to change them because mm -hmm. that's what generally a patriot would try to do is to to change it or keep it the way that it should be. So if you're just blindly following along, I really don't think you can be a patriot. Maybe, I, I don't know what, you know, that's just kind of blind loyalty, which seems like insanity. To Jingoism. Me. Yeah. Well, I mean, that seems to be the definition of patriotism. Now, obviously, everybody has their own definitions for words, and you know, if yeah. we can't agree patriotism on Patriotism really is one of those words right. that truly is defined by um, by the individual. Well, the same thing with the, the flag, right? I mean, we've talked in recent episodes of Free Talk Live about the, uh, the American flag, and when you talk to people about this, everybody's got their own belief for what it stands for. It represents you know? the people, or the country, or... Or the freedoms, or the, the nation, states or... joining together as a nation, or it represents a hegemony, and and imperialism. I mean, there's all kinds well, of viewpoints. And and because of this, because of how you know lax this is, and how you can interpret it, it's so easy to turn it around and use it for something bad, like oh, like yeah. the Patriot Act, which we're talking about. Um, that was a you know straight emotional game played by our federal government because of events that had just happened. They say, okay, well, if we just slap this name on it. You know, Americans, they want to be patriotic, so they'll just go along. They don't need to know what, what we're actually going yeah, to it's do. It's not like it. anybody's actually going to read the thing, in, <laughs> including the well, Congress they had it people. ready to go, didn't they? They did, yeah. It was, it was ready and waiting they in the They tried wings. to pass it before, and it had failed, but with 9-11, then everybody's like, protect us. Hey, Straight Razor, thanks for your call and thoughts. I appreciate it. I know where you're coming from. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. You pick up the receiver with your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead. You finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name and the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Jason! Jason! Going once, twice. Okay, we gotta move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the hosts you're listening to right now, online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link. Engage with other listeners. Ask questions. Start debates. Don't agree with a host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm We are back with more Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind here. 855-450-FREE, though we are talking about the idea of patriotism and what's really the value, if any, of this idea. Certainly it's valuable to politicians. To keep the wool pulled over people's eyes. Extraordinarily keep, useful to them. Right. To keep them ignorant of what's actually going on. You know, the politicians passed the Patriot Act over a decade ago. A portion of that Patriot Act is now up for renewal. And uh, Section 215, I believe it is, which is part of the authorization for— That's what they're trying to sink. A lot of the spying that has uh, been going on, which even the—was it the Circuit Court of Appeals? 
has said that the NSA went too far, that they, you know, even went beyond the increased bounds of the Patriot Act. Uh, so clearly, whatever the law says doesn't even matter to these government agencies, but it seems to matter to people. Uh, the you know the idea of patriotism certainly seems to matter to people, but what does it even really mean? I mean, according to the dictionary definition, it's just loyalty to one's nation, which doesn't have anything to do with, as our last caller suggested, the loyalty to the ideals or the founding ideals of the nation. It's just loyalty to the nation, meaning that doing what you're told would be patriotic, doing whatever the government wants you to do, paying your taxes, obeying the uh, regulations. That apparently is patriotism. Now, this is, you know, just sort of common human behavior, right? Like the, To do what you're told? No, the, the, to have a team. Uh, like, you know, I mean, okay. we can look at it with sports teams. There's uh, no particular reason why I should like the group of millionaires known as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers more than any of the other m millionaires that play what uh, at what we misnamed football um, in, in the United States. Mm. There's no good reasons why I should particularly like that group of millionaires over another group of millionaires that go out there and, uh, you know, harm themselves on a, you know, weekly basis for our entertainment. But I do. I like them better. I like the colors or something. Maybe but they the, changed their colors. They did. They changed them from uh, the cream sickles to uh, that pewter and red. Um, you know, and I, I like the colors then too. Oh, uh, like, I see. Yeah, it, it, maybe it's uh, it's from where you're from. But I've seen people who are really into, say, the Broncos that are from Tampa or um, New Hampshire, and uh, many times that's because they like a particular player. I, I, for whatever reason, somebody latches on to a team. Um, you know, that's the reason. And there's, you know, but when it comes to a country, I think the inculcation's significantly more. You're not lined up here. They don't have school children lining up, pledging allegiance to a Red Sox banner mm -hmm. here in New England. You'd think they did, but they don't. Um, and, uh, you know, so the, the, the inculcation starts much earlier. A five-year-old, which is how old I was when I started kindergarten, has no ability to make a decision as to whether or not they should be wanting to pledge their allegiance. Pledging your allegiance is a loyalty oath. Now, the, the colonists fought wars over this, uh, fought battles and wars over these loyalty oaths uh, because they thought that they were bad things. But uh, for whatever reason, fans, now it's acceptable. Yeah, the, the country thought it was a good idea to bring them back a little over 100 years after it was founded. I want to go to Tammy on the line in Indiana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tammy. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're great. Go ahead. Um, Today I was going on my Facebook and I had a bunch of stuff. Um, my sister's husband is in the military. And one of the things I got was a soldier in a casket. And the tagline was, you know, Memorial Day shouldn't be about barbecuing. It should be about remembering, you know, soldiers who have passed. I can now, understand why they might feel that is, way. Of course, you know, I'm not a heartless person. Anyone that, you know, dies horribly, but that's sad, irregardless, you know. But my whole thing is all of this patriotism and the soldiers, the soldiers, the soldiers. Personally, I did not twist their arm and tell them to go, quote, unquote, fight for my freedom. In my mm -hmm. opinion, you're not fighting for my freedom. You're fighting for what you believe in. Well, more Does specifically, that, that that's their motivation, right? Like the individual soldier has their own individual motivations for going in. As we talked about, some of them might want to go in just to legally murder people, uh, and others of them. I've might had that. Go. I've had young men that were going into the military say that that's what they were going yeah, to do. It's I mean, sick. I, uh, I, others, I'm not going to say that that's what most of them do. Though. And others might have gone in because they believe the propaganda that they're somehow fighting for freedom. But I agree with you, Tammy, that they're not fighting for freedom. What they are, in point of fact, fighting for objectively is the politicians wins whatever it is right. that the politicians want them to do they go and do it usually without question and to me that's uh not something i support no um just on it off note my husband had this discussion with my brother-in-law who's in the military mm -hmm. and he asked him a really great question because his um family is from mexico and he your husband's him, family or the the brother-in-law no, no, no. um my brother-in-law's family okay. And he asked them, if your grandmother was crossing the border, because he has done some things in Arizona, and if she was coming over here illegally, what would you do? And he said, even my grandmother 
I would do what I had to do that was necessary. Wow, and I that's thought bizarre. that's a very scary aspect. It is scary. You know, he's a patriot, I, right? He's got he's loyal. He is loyal to the the country, to the nation, even against his own family. A true patriot. Right. Well, we saw um, yeah. in uh, we saw during uh, Hurricane Katrina that uh, National Guard troops were used to disarm U.S. citizens, and That's we true. did hear an interview of one of them saying, oh, "I don't really want to have to do it to U.S. citizens. I want to have to pull the trigger on U.S. citizens, but I'll do it." Well, he didn't say that. He was just saying he didn't want to have to, which means that he would. Yeah. Absolutely, it's just scary. Be the Patriot Act. And unquote what others, not like minded people like, you know, you, Mark, Ian, and, you know, even Christopher Cantwell, but what we think, their version of patriotism is very scary. Thank you, Tammy, for your call tonight. I'm I'm with you, and I I appreciate where you're coming from. That's why, to me, the Free State Project is such an important idea because the people who believe in freedom, who really understand what liberty means, who are not aligned with whatever the politicians want them to do and blindly following orders, the people who are independently thinking and who want to be free, we've got to get those people together. They've got to increase their concentration in one geographic area. That's what's happening with the Free State Project. That's why you and I moved here to New Hampshire, Mark, from our home state of Florida originally. And now this is our home, and it's so great to be here. In fact, uh, one of our listeners just kind of as an aside, and we're going to continue with your calls here in a moment, but one of our listeners, uh, James, who actually kind of helps us behind the scenes with the show, wrote up a great blog piece recently over at the Free Coast website. I reposted it today at freekeen.com, and it's a, it's a cool little post because it really kind of gives you a window into the world of the families that are moving here to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. And, you know, obviously families going to the beach together isn't going to make a national headline, right? But that's kind of what he's talking about as well why moving to New Hampshire was the best thing our family could uh, ever could have done. That's the headline of the article. If you want to see it, go to freekeen.com. Let's go to Tursla in Tallahassee. Did I get, did I get that name right, Tursla? Hello? Whoever's in Tallahassee, I must have butchered your name. Uh, Tallahassee listener, you're on the line. Um, no, um, no, it's Teresa, but that's oh, okay. Teresa. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Teresa. Okay, well... First of all, I was calling from um, some time back when you were talking about the definition of patriot. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, um, I mean, patriot, the definition itself can't really be changed just based on people's feelings about it. For instance, you might have people in North Korea who love their country, their heritage, their um, culture, and yet they don't like their leader. So patriotism is more of a, a straightforward definition, just like you read, I, I feel. Well, but but the definition is national loyalty, which would mean that you would have to be loyal to whoever the uh, the boss man is, whoever is in. in Not the, necessarily. Well, then you wouldn't be loyal. What's I the mean, value in liking um, people close to you and not liking people far from you? I mean, I'm I'm still trying to because I'm okay, I, well, here's I'm trying another, to figure out. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to figure out what who to whom patriotism is valuable, and I still keep on coming up with the folks that want to fight wars. Well, here's the thing. I can I can um I can feel a, a friendship and a kinship to somebody in North Korea who loves their country but doesn't appreciate their leaders. Um, and I can love my country and I can value that they love their country. You know. When and, you say you and, love your yeah, country, let me ask you further. Leader. I'm sorry to interrupt, but when you say you love your country, what's that mean? Well, for me, it's a little bit different here because in America we're based on um, law. You know, Korea is not. So I love the fact that we can be free, and yet we do have um, a strong defense so that other people can come in and steal our freedom from us. But we're not free. Freedom does have – if you don't have boundaries, you don't have freedom. Okay. um, That's a strange thing to say. Well, I, yeah, I don't know what I don't know how boundaries are related to freedom, uh, but uh, let, let me ask you this. So you were bo- you're you're from That's Tallahassee, volume. right? I had boundaries when I was in a jail cell once, and I did not feel very free in there. I can tell you that. Hey, well, do you want to hang on, uh, exactly. Teresa? Because can you hang yeah, on through the sure. news? I know Mark's got some questions for you. Can you hang with us? Sure. All right, hang right. on. We're gonna come back with Teresa. You've got questions for her, Mark. Yeah. And uh, and if you want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us here, you dear listener. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero. 3733. We're talking about patriotism. What is the value of it? Plus, I also want to hear the answer to what is the country? What does it even mean? It's Free Talk Live. Well, I did it. I finally left the empire behind. 
And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate... Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, May 23rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.13 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,206 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. Antiwar.com reports, weeks after seizing the North Syrian town of Jasir al-Shakur, Al-Qaeda's Nusra Front has finally managed to seize the town's hospital, which had been the last site held by Syrian forces who had been locked in it ever since. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that the hospital was overrun and that dozens of the soldiers had managed to flee, while others were either killed or captured. About 150 troops were believed to be inside at the start of the offensive. Al-Qaeda and its allies have been seizing a significant statelet of their own across Syria's northwest, with Jasir al-Shakur and the rest of the Idlib province the centerpiece. They have also been looking to expand further to the west, aiming to contest the Latakia coast, which is held by the Syrian military. While Idlib and Jasir al-Shakur were held by the military, much of the rest of the province was held by smaller rebel factions, many of whom were pro-U.S. factions overrun by al-Qaeda. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports two jails in Mississippi routinely failed to provide prisoners with reasonable safety from violence, housed them in filthy conditions, and often kept them in custody long after their court-ordered release dates, that from a report from the Department of Justice. The Hines County Adult Detention Center in Raymond, Mississippi, and the Jackson City Detention Center in Jackson, Mississippi, violated the constitutional rights of its prisoners, according to the Federal Review. The Justice Department's review was sparked by ongoing violence at the jail. 
schools. The report said these incidents include at least three major riots, two alleged homicides, and numerous assaults on prisoners and staff members. They required closing entire housing units and transferring prisoners to other jurisdictions where they were difficult to locate by defense attorneys and court officials. Not only are the jails understaffed, the Raymond facility has an 80% vacancy rate, the Jackson facility is at 50, but they're also underqualified. The report said without adequate staffing, the jail cannot supervise prisoners, deter violence, or properly respond to emergencies. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeracy supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. Reuters reports China said on Friday it was strongly dissatisfied with a U.S. spy plane that flew over part of the South China Sea this week near where China is building artificial islands and called on the United States to stop such action or risk causing an accident. The U.S. flight on Wednesday was highlighted by the unusual Pentagon decision to invite a CNN team aboard the Poseidon surveillance plane. It said the Chinese Navy issued eight warnings to the aircraft to move away from the contested territory. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Hong Li Lee said the Chinese military drove away the aircraft in accordance with relevant regulations. He labeled the U.S. action a security threat to China's islands and reefs. He told a news conference, such action is likely to cause an accident. It is very irresponsible and dangerous and detrimental to regional peace and stability. We express our strong dissatisfaction. We urge the U.S. to strictly abide by international law and international rules and refrain from taking any risky and provocative actions. China will continue to closely monitor the the relevant area and take the necessary and appropriate measure to prevent harm to the safety of China's islands and reefs as well as any sea and air accidents. A Pentagon spokesman called the mission routine and said such flights occurred every few days. Colonel Steve Warren said the Poseidon had not gone within the 12-mile territorial limits that China claims around the artificial islands, but said this could happen in the future. The U.S. stance reflects the fact that while it does not recognize Chinese territorial limits around reclaimed land, it wants to avoid escalating the issue further than necessary. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Reflecting on the persistent troubles it caused his sibling during childhood, local doctor Daniel Barrett told reporters this week about his average-looking brother, Kevin, who first inspired him to be a cosmetic surgeon. As a kid, I remembered thinking that there was nothing I could do for Kevin. Watching someone you really love and care about suffer from a weak jawline or unsymmetrical features. It had a major impact on me. And in this week's local news, a community theater gives the part of Blanche Dubois to Kathy f***ing Hamilton. In other news, a moviegoer manages to sneak candy past a teenage usher earning $7 an hour. A new app matches you with others in the vicinity who wasted $2.99 on the same app. And a Roman centurion crawling out of a New York City manhole cover is in for one wacky adventure. Having graciously spread my knowledge to the uneducated masses, I now return to the stately, elegant ranks of news announcer society. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, we're back with more Free Talk Live on the live Saturday edition of the program. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Mark. And you can join us on these radio waves via our toll-free number, which is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online, of course, at freetalklive.com, where you actually get to control the content on the site. You can submit... Uh, whatever it is you find online that you think is interesting, something you think our listeners will appreciate, whether it's an important news item or just something fun, you submit it there over at freetalklive.com, and other listeners will vote it up or down, depending on whether they like or dislike. And you get to vote on things as well. So just go there and get interactive, freetalklive.com. Mark, do you want to recap kind of where we've been coming from? Uh, what's you know What has the discussion been in the last hour for our listeners just tuning in? Mostly we're talking about patriotism. Uh, the, the Patriot Act is up for sort of sort of uh, some level of renewal they're going they're trying to replace it with the freedom act thing um i suspect uh, you know they're not Patriot replacing it they're just sort of modifying okay mo it's a modification stuff. um and you know i mean the freedom act probably has nothing to do with freedom and i don't know if the patriot act has anything to do with patriotism uh, and, but i mean i guess the questions that i'm asking here is is that it, what seems obvious to me is that patriotism allows politicians to kind of skulk about and do what they do 
And um, there are many great advocates for um, patriotism, likely listening. Now, I used to be a big, you know, I would, would have called myself rather patriotic. Now I kind of question the value of it. And one of the reasons is, is that when you use critical thinking on this, is you often have to hunt down who, where, you know, who, who makes the money? Where's the, what's the value? And when it comes to the value of patriotism, it doesn't seem like it benefits you or me or my family or our neighborhood or anything like that. Like we could get all those things from just sort of good neighborliness or whatever. Um, that whatever patriotism has, it seems to mostly benefit the politicians and whatever their, whoever the people that pay them off are. Let's go back to Teresa. She's with us in Tallahassee. Mark, you had asked or, or going to ask a question of Teresa just a moment ago. She had said that uh, she made some sort of comment about loving one's country as far as patriotism. And I certainly don't want to put words in your mouth, Teresa. So I, I wanted to make sure we brought you back. And thank you for waiting patiently there during the news. But Mark, do you recall the question that you were going okay. to ask Teresa? Yeah. So, Teresa, um, when I think of patriotism, I often think of uh, it's sort of similar to religions. Like, so if you've got a thing that, you know, a country you like, you're patriotic towards, how is it that you can kind of think it's okay for somebody else to like another one? Um, why wouldn't it be okay for them to like their country? Well, um, I, I guess these, uh, I mean, you're either right or wrong in the liking of your country, right? And they're either right or wrong in the liking of their country. So well, if, why can't everybody be right? Well, Just be because I love my country or I like my country doesn't mean that I hate other countries. <laughs> okay, so if yeah, I, I was born on, on the, uh, the, the, if I was born in El Paso, Texas, a few miles mm -hmm. from the line of Mexico, and, uh, uh -huh. you know, my ancestry was perhaps Mexican, should I like the Mexico flag better than the American flag or the American flag better than the Mexican flag? Well, you know what? It's kind of like, let's see, I have children. I love my children. You know, I see their good and bad points. And I, I, I like other people's children, and I love some other people's children, too. And generally, I love children in general. So just because my children are mine and I love them and provide for them doesn't mean that I hate my neighbor's children. I think that's a, a fine answer, and I, I think it. I, I want to go back to your other, uh, the other question I had asked you, Teresa, which you didn't have time to answer in the last segment, which was, what is the country? You say you love your country. How do you define country? What does that mean? Is it the plot of land? Well, I guess if I was in a different country, it'd be it might be different. The things I loved, I do appreciate our government, even though I don't like it overrunning our some of our you know overstepping. I think there should be some more boundaries on the government. It should be um, reined back in, and we shouldn't have such a strong federal government. I think we should have more state control okay. over uh, individual states. But you like the federal um, government's flag better than the state flags. Well, I like the Florida flag. Well, and I, I like. The, I the saw United one States guy flag. one time with a Florida tat Florida flag tattoo. He's the only one I've ever seen, and I've <laughs> seen so many American flag tattoos. Well, but the American flag is our whole country and we are whether you live in georgia or florida i live pretty close to the georgia state line and um i love those people too i mean so it's kind of you know it's kind of like your neighbor i but saw a lot of uh confederate flag, flag tattoos and, too oh i know i don't appreciate the confederate flag actually Why but not? anyway that's just me because it, it was a it was a sign of rebellion and division so there's something wrong with rebellion and division? Isn't that is what you want when you want more state rights? States' rights is more division? No, no, not at all. How can you want more strong you know, if states? You a, if you have a, just think about this. Um, do you, do you, are you okay with public, well, not, let's not even say it's a public school. Let's just say an elementary school in general, whether it's a public school, a charter school, or a religious school. Should there be um, a principal of that school and teachers, and should they be, kind of, um, you know, organized into maybe groups of learning so that it's more systematic and organized? Does if, that work out pretty if well? If that's what works for them, school? I don't do that for my son, but if that's what works for people. I like mm -hmm. uh, the idea mm -hmm. of unschooling, which is to get kids out of these institutions. I know what it is because I did it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like I that, that a lot better. Children. I homeschooled five children, and I unschooled most of the time. So let me see if I've, I'm anyway. clear on something here, Teresa. You said you like well, she the was idea. Making, she was running down to a point. Oh, I'm we, sorry. We were on the primrose path, and I was just beginning to smell the primroses. If you do have a group of children that need to be schooled or educated for whatever reason, and you, or any group of people, it usually works um, more efficiently to have it organized in ways that, for instance, if one, if one state 
um, well, one state is. For instance, Colorado. You know, if you want to smoke pot freely, you can go to Colorado. And no, Washington. you can't smoke it freely there. Well, not freely, but uh, more well, freely. What, right. Yeah, right. But, I mean, that's the kind of thing that I think works better than having um, a giant conglomerate federal uh so you're in favor of more states' rights. State. You're in favor of yeah. more states' rights, mm-hmm. but yet you still support a, a federal government. Okay, so do you think mm-hmm. the federal yeah. go- you think the federal government's mostly um, about uh, protecting the nation? Then I mean, you, you have that sound to you. Yes, I think it's okay. more um, protecting the nation. You know, they take care of our interstate highways. Look at our look at our beautiful. They really highways. don't. They, <laughs> the highways. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't give you've got. Right. Okay, so they they I printed. Hold on. Right. They they planned out the interstate highways, but they actually hand out funding to the states. Um, mm-hmm. So your state That's government true. is the one that you can go across a state line and see the pavement mm-hmm. change on an interstate. So um, right. the federal right. government doesn't administer but the money that. Money is coming from the federal government. But yeah, they but take it from you. They take it from the from you who are inside the state anyway. And so then, if the state wanted money for roads they could they could take it and before they take by the way when they take the money from you they then give a bunch of it to their federal bureaucrats who add absolutely no value whatsoever to it uh they take away money from the money that has gone to the federal government then they hand a fraction of it back to the states and we're expected to thank them for it what value okay so we've we've already broken apart the roads (laughs) argument so what value do they provide you because we know they're not protecting you but that's okay (laughs) <laughs> we know they're not protecting you, right, Teresa? They're putting you in greater danger by going around the world and meddling in other countries' business. No. Not, well, you know what? That Every every one of those um, wars has its own things that you could debate about. But, but one thing I was thinking of earlier, if you look back historically, you can always see things better the farther away you get from That's it. true. Hindsight's and, 2020. You know, this lady was talking about um, that these, these soldiers did it of their own accord. Well— you know, there used to be the draft, okay? You know, and in World War II, World War One, World War Two, and Korean, and Vietnam, the draft was in effect. Thousands of young 18 to 20-year-olds and a little older went to war. And you know what? They just went and they followed what they were told to do. They did, And maybe they weren't so patriotic. Maybe they didn't even want to go, but they went. And because they did that in World War II, not in just World War Two, but specifically looking at the Holocaust, you had men there who were free to rule a country any way they wanted to, and what did they choose to do? They chose to torture and imprison millions of people, and our young boys found them and rescued them. And I'm talking about— So are about you saying you support the draft? No, no. I don't support the draft. Right. What I'm just—but what I'm saying is— um, well, you know that's a happenstance of history, happen. right? Like, it's, it's really important. Hold, well, hold on. The death of the Jews is oftentimes conflated with a good reason to have fought World War II, but you know that's a happenstance of history, right? Like, the United States turned away the ship right. of the damned. They turned oh, away and I killed know. a ship yeah. full of Jews because they didn't care about taking them in. The United States government didn't yes, care about did. freeing Ju- Jews. I Teresa, know. good call. No. Thanks for sharing no. your thoughts tonight. I do appreciate hearing from right. you. The toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free 855 450 3733. I see no benefit to having a federal government. It's a big leech. Free Talk Live. Warning if you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station because there's an alternative to bankruptcy and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 
Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. We, of course, will take your calls on any topic, but we've been discussing the idea of patriotism and in my opinion, what a dangerous idea this is, because essentially it just allows politicians to get away with pretty much anything that they want to. Uh, the term patriotism, by definition, according to the dictionary, means national loyalty. It doesn't necessarily mean, as one of our callers earlier suggested, uh, loyalty to the ideals or the founding ideals of the country. I know a lot of people want to believe that, but that's not the actual definition of patriotism. Patriotism is just sort of going along with whatever the people in charge want to do. Uh, so what's the value of patriotism, if any? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and uh, we're going to continue with your calls in a moment. The amount of people who are giving up their U.S. citizenship is skyrocketing, and I don't know why that is. I don't know the. I don't think it's possible to know the amount of people that are not giving up their citizenship but are just living in other countries. But one project I've been kind of keeping my eye on is Fort Galt. What they're doing is they're creating kind of a condominium complex down in Chile. Now, what they have is really small units. They're really just for sleeping, and they have these common areas: mm -hmm. uh, coffee shops and restaurants, and uh, restaurant, coffee shop, and, and a variety of different places. Business well, they will center. have it. It has yet to be built. Yes, it is uh, at this point. It exists. Uh, in 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 CAD or SketchUp and on on the internet, but there, I, I just actually visited with one of their uh, the founders. He came by my house oh, wow. after having uh, dropped off at Bensonwood, which is really just.
just around the corner. Now, they're a premier huh. builder here in the U.S., but they happen to be um, near Keene, New Hampshire. Really? Yeah. So he uh, he stopped by, and I introduced him to my uh, the first uh, the first families, uh, the the presidents that I have there. Uh huh. All Your my pigs. P- all my pigs. Yeah. yeah. All my pigs are named after presidents. Um. And and first ladies. Because you're going to kill them. Well, I, I you know, they they need they need to have personalities. Right. Yeah, and, we're and gonna, you're going to kill them. I'm I, at some point we all die, Ian. Uh, <laughs> but I can tell you that uh, the Bill Clinton isn't going to die um, anytime soon. I figured if uh, I was going to have a boar and he was going to be good for eating and humping, Clint, should Clinton. Clinton should be an awesome name for there him. You go. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, fortgalt.com. Go check out the videos and the uh, the I write-ups. Think it's a cool they idea. There. I've looked at it and uh, it's affordable too. Like this is not. You know, when I when ten thousand dollars yeah. for their smallest unit. Right. When I when I think about moving out of the U.S., I think, oh God, who can afford that? But ten thousand dollars is something you could save up for, and you don't have to pay it all up front. In fact, you pay in installments, right? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, you don't. They don't want you to put your money at risk uh, at a project in a project like this too early. They just want a sort of a commitment from you. Right. So check it out, fortgalt.com. I'm going to spell it for you because not everybody necessarily knows who John Galt is. Mm. F o r t g a l t. FortGalt.com. All right, let's go to Michael. He's in Panama City, Florida, listening to WYOOFM. Hey, Michael, you're on Free Talk Live. Um, I'm, I would say relatively young, and I've been listening to more, more and more talk show radios. Uh, sorry, talk, talk radio right. shows for the past year or so. I, I've only recently just turned 24, and what I've been hearing through most is that really there shouldn't be any government at all is what I'm learning so far. Well, I don't think humans can live without government, but I would uh, challenge, uh, like I would, I would finesse the terminology you use. So um, if an organization claims a monopoly privilege on the use of governance in a given area, because government is essentially a list of services that uh, an organization provides, um, monopolies tend to be inefficient and they tend to provide terrible customer service. We've seen that historically. So if one, like, if you can imagine for a second, if governments weren't tied to land masses, then in, was- instead they provide goods, you know, they provide whatever services they provide, and it's not necessarily, um, you know, attached to a land mass, then that would cause competition in a way that would probably really make much more effective uh, the services that they pride, uh, provide and drive down costs. So that was definitely the, the second lesson that I was going to say that I've also sort of seen so far is that uh, borders and ideals of naming parts of mountains and lands and things like that, uh, humans have no deal doing that. It makes no sense. And so it, I don't really know how to say it. Like I said, I'm I'm not that... Uh, informed so, on the subject or anything like so that. So in I'm order to get more started. informed, I'd recommend a couple of things. Uh, there's some great books mm-hmm. out there. There are a, a zillion of them, but there's a few that I like a lot. Uh, and you can go to book dot or uh, book dot freekeen dot com or books dot freetalklive dot com. One or the other. Uh, that'll take you to a list of some reading recommendations. One of them I like is Why Government Doesn't Work by Harry Brown. He's the uh, He was, he's now dead, but uh, he was the Libertarian Party's presidential candidate back in 1996 and the year 2000. And that's a real great book because it really lays out the failure of the state and uh, why government doesn't work. We, you know, It has all these unintended consequences, and using force creates unintended consequences, using aggressive force. To me, I like the idea of self-government. You know, so th- that's a fine idea where you govern yourself. You know, you don't go crazy and hurt people, and you know you're governing yourself. Um, and if you feel, yeah, I totally agree. yeah, and if you feel uh, the need to, say, uh, I totally to, agree with that. Thank you. And if you Is feel that, the need to, um, to hire somebody to tell you what to do, then you should be able to hire someone to tell you what to do if that's what you want to do. Hire an expert uh, to you know well, clue you in. Um, but you know, don't force people of, uh, to do things. Sorry, uh, one of the large things that I've never really understood is a lot of conservatives argue about. Uh, things like people putting into law uh, banning sugary drinks and thing, or uh, banning cigars and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. they say it's wrong and they, they should be able to control what we intake or, or what we want to buy. But on the same flip of the coin, they'll argue 
for banning drug use. They sure and will. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll want to ban yeah, drugs like, or gambling, but they want you to be able to drink a big soda and smoke a cigar. And a cigar, which it is, is a really drug. bizarre yeah. reasoning. Michael, I mean, there's no reason to it. Great points tonight, and uh, next time you talk to a conservative, you should bust them on that one. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-453, because if a, if a conservative is supposedly, as many of them purport to be, supposedly in favor of economic freedom, then you should have them there. I mean, you've got them by the the short hairs on that one because if you really do favor economic freedom, meaning the freedom to do business with other consenting people on whatever you know aspect, whatever your business is supposed to be, because that's economic freedom, right? It's my business. It's my business. You leave me alone. Well, then what if my business is selling marijuana? What if my business is I want to you know uh, make some LSD and sell that too? Should I be able to do that? Well, yeah, if by the principles of economic freedom, I should be able to. I'm only selling to customers who want to buy my stuff. Some conservatives are really libertarians and don't know what the term means. Um, and some conservatives are really just about the way things were at some point in the past when they think that they were great. Oftentimes, you'll get this happy days explanation that things were great in the 50s. And that's just not conservatives, by the way. That's liberals, too. At this point, um, or progressives. At this point, this nation is so off the rails that uh, progressives and conservatives will hearken back back to the same time frame and talk about different aspects of it that were good. Why they were so great. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. We've got Daniel. He's in Myrtle Beach listening to WRNN. Hey, Daniel. How you doing tonight? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Um, the young lady that called in earlier about um, the military and she didn't understand all the hoopla around them and that they weren't fighting for her freedom... I can understand where she's coming from. They may not be fighting directly for her freedom, but they are providing a deterrent against other countries that really don't give a flying flip about our freedom. Well, and stand by, Daniel. I want to here. talk to you about that here because I disagree. I think that what they are doing is they're stirring up hatred for the people in the United States around the world and causing terrorism as a result. It's Free Talk Live. The economy is teetering on the edge. Spending and taxes are at all-time highs. Average Americans are hanging on by their fingertips. Is the American dream dead? Can it be restored? Join us at Freedom Fest, the world's largest gathering of free minds, in Las Vegas, July 8th through 11th, to hear the historic debate between Paul Krugman and Steve Moore. Plus, Senator Mike Lee, publisher Steve Forbes, billionaire Steve Wynn, and media mogul Glenn Beck tell us how America finds her way back. Discover the new American dream. Register today at FreedomFest.com to find out. That's FreedomFest.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So, what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Join us here on the radio waves for Free Talk Live. You can dial in here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you don't have to share your thoughts on patriotism or the military on this Memorial Day weekend here. You can bring up anything that you like. That is the reason we call the show Free Talk Live. Uh, 855-450-FREE is our number. And Skype us at Skype username LRN.FM. If you are online, whether it's your smartphone, laptop, your desktop at home, or at work, you need to protect yourself because there could be people, including your very own internet service provider, who are violating what you thought was your privacy. In the case of the ISP, You're just passing all the information to them anyways. You don't have any privacy with them by default. In fact, they may be uh, storing a list or a log of all of the websites that you visit and the search terms that you enter. They could store that for years in some cases, from what I understand, but you can stop that from happening. You can prevent people from sniffing your Wi-Fi packets and getting your credit card information, perhaps, by using ProXPN because they encrypt your data connection. Now, ProXPN is not an internet service provider. So you keep your current internet service provider. You just start using ProXPN software, which you can download for free over at proxpn.com slash FTL. What ProXPN is, is a global virtual private network. Now, with a free account, you only get to connect to one of their servers. But with their premium account, you get servers around the world that you can connect to, unlimited bandwidth, you can privately torrent, and you can even get past those pesky regionally blocked websites. You know when they say, sorry, we can't show you this because you're in the United States. Well, if you've got ProXPN, you can make those websites think you're in Singapore or in the Netherlands or some other places. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, grab the software and get started. And when you're ready to upgrade to that premium account, you can use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and 50, as in 50% off the price of the annual account, which breaks your price down to about $5 per month, a little less than that, actually. Uh, Code FTL50 also gives you the savings for the lifetime of your account. So when you're ready to Roll around for year number two, you get the same great deal. ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose except your privacy. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So don't forget promo code FTL50 to get that deep discount on privacy that is priceless over at proxpn.com slash ftl as we continue here daniel is still with us in myrtle beach daniel you'd uh, made some statement about the military providing protection uh from other countries around the world is that right i didn't say i didn't say protection i said a deterrent a deterrent So, so they're deterring what exactly an invading horde from coming into the united states or do you actually think that some of these other nations, if we disbanded the military, would come over here and hold hands and sing Kumbaya with you? I, d- I love the Kumbaya thing because, you know, as a, as a libertarian, what I do every night is I get out of a campfire and I sing Kumbaya a whole lot. Um, <laughs> it, it's just ridiculous. Okay, so the fact is is that the United States— 
whether you believe it's providence, uh, you know, dictated by God, or whether whether you believe it's sheer luck or whatever, is really well placed geographically. It's unlikely yes, it that is. the seething red horde of Canada is going to come down, thundering across the 49th parallel. Yeah, and what about uh, the Chinese, Mark? They could come across the Pacific Ocean. That's a long ocean, and um, I'm reasonably certain that uh, we'd be prepared for it. Land invasions, uh, you know, taking a beachfront, very difficult. How, the, how would you be prepared for it since there's no military? Well, um, uh, how about militias? Which is another form of the military. No. Okay, if that's what no, you want to call it. I mean, I mean, the militia is— That's what the founding fathers wanted were militias. It's an organization, from what I understand, at least the militias that exist today are volunteer, voluntary organizations, meaning that they fund themselves on their own, they have their own membership, they're not forcing people to pay for them. I'm not interested in paying for the military personally. I'm not worried about it, dude. Whether it's militias or just individuals coming together for their own common defense, uh, there are hundreds of millions of guns in the United States. Do you think that yes, would be a deterrent? Well, no, not really, because only about 2% of the population in the United States has got the backbone to join the military and do it. The rest of them sit around waiting for them to do it. Well, it's it has not, nothing to do Joining with... the military is different than fighting uh, fighting to protect uh, the, the land, your land, if it's uh, under attack, right? Like, So we have as many firearms in this country as we do people, and actually a few extras, um, you know, a few million extra. So... I mean, the there, there's this uh, apocryphal quote of a Japanese general that said that you couldn't, you know, telling the, the Japanese they couldn't invade the U.S. homeland. There's a gun hiding behind every blade of grass. Um, I'm not really worried about people coming over here to attack us, except maybe somebody who's gotten so stirred up about what's going on in their country, they figure they're going to bring it here, like 9-11, for instance. The folks on, uh, you know, the Yemenis and Saudis that attacked on 9-11, um, notice there's no Iraqis um, there, um, they, you know, they were so upset with the way things were going, they decided to bring it over here. But that mostly has to do with U.S. foreign policy and occupation in the Middle East, well, supporting dictators we'll and kings that, over that, there. That goes that goes down on also is the intelligence that the that the president at the time had. That's why he went in there. In everybody where likes Iraq? In Iraq. Yeah. That's why everybody likes to dump on Bush, but he went on the intelligence he had, just like nobody's dumped on Barack Obama when he went in there with drones and killed two two private citizens. Oh, we've day, dumped on Barack he, Obama yeah. and George Bush. Yeah, we'll uh, dump on them all here on yeah. Free Talk Live because they're all what, thugs. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is he acted on the intelligence that he had at the time. Military yeah. intelligence is an oxymoron. Well, um, also that intelligence yes, came from. I, I'll agree with that. I was in it for 17 years. Daniel, thanks it for your call oxymoron. tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. That intelligence did come from torture, and um, oftentimes what we'll get from the right is support in from torture. Now, I'm not on the left when I say on the right. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, is that I feel like I'm above the fray. I don't believe that I um, am either one of these because, uh, you know, libertarians are different. They're socially uh, liberal but economically conservative. I believe you should be able to do what you want in your life as long as you don't harm other people. And the military... The way it's been employed over the last six decades, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to talk about the World War II thing. But it's really difficult to make a pro-— a, a <laughs> a pro-conservative argument for the way the military has been used over the last six decades. It's really just been used as a cudgel for U.S. foreign policy to punish those who uh, don't get in line with the way U.S. wants things, uh, wants things and uh, to reward those that do. And to funnel all kinds of money to the military-industrial complex as That's well. That's what politics is. It's yeah. the ability to reward your friends and punish your enemies. And let's go to—and by the way, the military-industrial complex gets rewarded regardless of whether it's uh, you know Republicans or Democrats in office. They're all going to war. Uh, let's talk to Dennis. He's in Ireland. Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hey, Dennis. Great. Go ahead with your thoughts, please. Hi, uh -oh. I'm from Ireland. We have— Gay marriage legalized today. Oh, congratulations! We well, we we hate it. What do you What do you? Hi, hate? how are you? Who's we? Apparently, somebody likes we it. We hate gay marriage. Why? But they Irish people like it. We are unhappy. Why? Because of gay bags. Because of gay bags. I mean, is that a is that a uh, a, a slight gay, of a term? Gay bags. Gay hmm? bags. I mean, look. I mean, look at it this way: there is Irish people who think that gay marriage is correct, but we think it is gay bags. 
What does that mean? Gay bags is an Irish expression which means that it is wrong. It is not Adam and Steve, it was Adam and Eve. Uh -huh. Do you think this guy's really Irish? Are you for real now? This is some guy from well, Alabama. Had a big hairy gay and All right, I've heard enough. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number here. You can join us on the air. I think it's, you know, look, there's the argument against gay marriage that the only one that holds water is if you say the government shouldn't be involved in any marriages. Yeah, I don't think the government should, that the government has a place in uh, the marriage contract. Well, they've had one, unfortunately, since the late 1800s when a marriage, con mar marriage licenses were created to prevent black people from marrying white people. So there's a real racist history to the marriage license. And ever since then, they've been meddling in people's relationships, uh, you know, Constantly. Well, that's what so, a license is. The government steals your rights away from you and then sells them back. Um, but, you know, George and Martha Washington, they were married by somebody, a preacher writing in the back of their Bible. And that's all they needed. And I think that's all somebody should need. Um, you know, you don't necessarily right. have a preacher. But, but today, the marriage process gives couples who get married certain privileges that they wouldn't otherwise have like you know being able to visit someone in a hospital and things like that and so most while, of it most of it has to do with government uh, handouts i think well but the hospital thing's a real thing it is um, a real thing yeah. but you know so as long as government marriage is going to exist then it should be available to anyone who wants it whether gay or straight or in my opinion uh you know multiple partners 855 453 destroy government uh, mail uh... every summer we go to canyon woods Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit Promote.LRN.FM for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. And bring up anything that you want, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well, at Skype username LRN.FM. With you in studio, Ian here. And Mark. And don't forget, if you want to help support Free Talk Live, uh, one of the ways you can do that is by shopping with us. You go to shop dot freetalklive.com there are links to amazon there's also a walmart link in there as well but amazon us amazon canada amazon uh the hell am i leaving out uk uh you can go and click into the right amazon for you and free talk live will get a percentage of your purchase price i think it's like seven or eight percent it's actually pretty decent uh payout there when you go and get your shopping done through our links. It's the same great prices you're used to. It's the same Amazon service, the same free super saver shipping, Amazon Prime, all that. It's just you're entering through our affiliate link, so they cut us a portion of their profits. Get your shopping started over at shop.freetalklive.com. As we go to Steve, he's in Alabama. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello there, my man. How are you today? I'm well. Steve, go ahead with your thoughts. Not too bad. I just seen you had a man there on earlier who was talking about gay marriage coming to Ireland. I think it was totally wrong what he said. You thought it was wrong what he said. Okay, why? Well, uh, being an Irish-American, I keep in close contact. With you sound like a Jamaican-American. <laughs> well, it's because my mother was from the Caribbean. <laughs> That's so funny. The way that I... It's funny. I don't really well, care where you're from. Go ahead care. with your opinion. Well, I just think that in the southern states, uh, religion is so such a major thing that people should never have such a problem with it. But it's gay marriage. The church will recognize it in America pretty soon. Well, some churches do. Lots of different churches. Yeah, yeah. some some churches do. Steve, thanks for the call tonight. Uh, interesting accent. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some churches do, like the Unitarians. I bet you if you're gay, you could go and get a marriage at the Uni- Unitarian Church. Sure, Episcopal. Episcopals do it? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I just saw the Methodists uh, with uh, you know some gay marriage flag out in front there. I figure, well, Methodists are about as mainstream as you can get. Uh, the tides are a change in as far as uh, gay marriage goes. Do Quakers this, perform marriages? Uh, yes, they do. What you don't think? Don't think Qua- you think well, Quakers no have hierarchy. existed for four hundred years and well, they don't pr- perform marriages? I mean, there's no. Well, in some Quaker churches, there's no hierarchy, right? There's like you know. Nobody's the preacher, if you will. Right. Um, so in what they call unprogrammed meetings, yeah. uh, they the, the the meeting itself marries people. Oh, really? They'll okay. often have the clerk, which I am the clerk for my meeting. They will um, they'll sign it, or they'll have some uh, you know s- some folks from the meeting sign it. Oftentimes, they'll have everybody who is in attendance sign it too. So you know that's uh, Quakers are. Usually, it's their weddings and their memorial services that really uh, get people in and uh, hmm. you know find out about it because they they find them very touching. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Steve is in Myrtle Beach, listening to WRNN. Hey, Steve. Hi. Hey, you're on the air. Yes, um, I'd just like to ask you both a very similar question. Um, when our special forces went in and took out the money man of ISIS, didn't you feel a little bit of patriotism in your heart? Absolutely not. I I don't like um, like I'm certainly not a fan of uh, ISIS, and I think they're going to get uh, like they're going to get it. 
Um, I don't celebrate the death of anyone, but that I, I didn't. I can assure you, I didn't lose any sleep over it. At the same time, ISIS is playing a game where they're trying to get the world powers, for whatever reason, to come in and wipe them all out. I don't understand why they're playing the game the way they're playing it, but I can tell what the results are going to be. Well, as far as I'm concerned, ISIS was created by the U.S. Uh, government's actions, their intervention, certainly, and, yeah, and their aggression around the world. So, you know, that's just the price you pay for continuing to aggress. And even if they do wipe out ISIS, there'll be another group that will follow them. So what's the point of all this? Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is they took out a key person that controls the financial operations of that. Uh, whoop they do Somebody else will do the job now that he's dead. I mean, look, this is what's how is this any different from the war on drugs, right? Every now and then in the war on drugs, you'll get the police saying, oh, we busted this drug dealer and look at all this drugs and money we got. That'll put a stop to drugs. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. It's just another opportunity for someone to step in and fill that void. It's, it's never it's not been a question about um, whether we're going to stop them or not. But do you feel that you had a little bit of patriotism in your heart when you heard No, that. because I do not like the state, and everything the state does is based on violence. It's based on the aggression, uh, aggressive force, and whatever they're doing, I don't appreciate it because they're funding it the wrong way. If you want to go and voluntarily send money over to some military effort, that's your business, but don't force me to do it. I'm not interested in it. I'd rather you know support people who defend their land and their property rather than people who go around the world destroying people's lives and property. I'd say I felt it. I, I felt a certain amount of uh, sort so of. So you're a sucker. For a sucker for what? What do you mean? For patriotism, apparently. Well, uh, th look, so ISIS uh, is not helping anybody over there, and I don't think that they're a really great organization. How do you know that? What's that? How do you know that? Oh, they're helping. I'm sorry. They're politicians, so they're helping some people and harming other there people. There you go. Okay, so they're harming a lot of people over there, yep. but they're really inconsequential. I think they took Ramadi with about 200 people. I mean, this is a this is a laughable news story. 200 people have taken a city from a nation mm. that has a military that has been trained by the United States for over 10 years. Um, that's. I mean, the the fact is, is ISIS shows just how incompetent the government that uh, the U.S. used to replace Saddam Hussein is. I agree wholeheartedly with you gentlemen. I enjoy your program. Just wanted to make a point. Thanks, Thank Steve. I appreciate your call tonight. Let's go and continue. We've got David. He's in Lynchburg, Virginia, listening to WLNI-FM. Hey, David. David? Hey, how's it going? Hey, going good. Go ahead. I'd just like you to elaborate a little bit on what would a federal government look like with or what would America look like without a federal government? Oh, wouldn't it be beautiful? We would have 50 different states, or maybe there'd be some con conglomerations of them, but we'd have more choices for people in which to live where, you know, one state could try one policy and another state could try a different policy, and, you know, we'd, we'd figure out which one was the best and what was most effective, and maybe, like, the, the lefties could go live in their own states and the righties could go live in their own states. Well, they do. It's just that they're forced to have a president that, uh, you know, that they disagree with and have a Congress they disagree with at this point. You don't think there'd be like uh, eventually some large power struggles and, you know, big bullies over in Texas or California or, you know, like hard eventually commerce would. You're saying, are you worried? Just to clarify what you're saying, are you worried that Texas is going to invade uh, Oklahoma or something like that? Well, I mean, wouldn't it eventually just become a whole bunch of countries? Yeah, America. wouldn't that be all right? I mean, in Europe, people can cross fairly freely between many of the European countries. That's because of the EU. They um, they they made an agreement. I would say the the most. That's not necessarily because of that, but also, I mean, the e people could cross between countries before the EU sure. came around. Mark, you get on a train. Yeah, um, but now it's even easier than it was. Okay, well that's fine, but that doesn't mean it has to be hard without the EU. It doesn't mean it has to be hard without the federal government. There are people in you know uh, Oklahoma who know people in Texas, and odds are good they're not going to want to fight one another, right? Well, I, I don't think that the gentleman's talking about fighting, Ian. He's talking about the Interstate Commerce Clause here. It's mm -hmm. the it's the reason the Constitution was shoved was uh, sort of brought in in the dark of night uh, to over the uh, Articles of Confederation. The idea mm -hmm. was to modify the Articles of Confederation. What they did was decide to write a whole new document, and then they uh, threatened a blockade against uh, Rhode Island if they didn't sign it. So yeah, I mean, there's there's some history of violence behind the document. There's no doubt about it, and I think that the 
uh, that's the value to the Constitution is this sort of this interstate commerce clause thing. Is it but worth it uh, been thirteen used. trillion dollars or whatever? I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of worried though that wouldn't it? You just eventually lose all sense of unity in America. What's this then, point? What's this unity of which you speak, and what is the point of it? I mean, ability to work together, like act, um, go to war if they had to. And I don't want to go to war. And beyond that, I don't really have a sense of unity with people in California. I live in New Hampshire, and the people in New Hampshire are very, very different from the people of, uh, of California. I have no sense of unity to the people out there. That doesn't mean I can't work with them, though. I mean, there are people all around the world who work with one another, and they don't have to agree on everything. They just have to agree that, oh, I like that product at the right price. I'll deal with you. Right. Well, what about if we needed to make a stand? Like, I know you don't like... What about World War II or in a World, World War II where Germany, uh, was created where because where the United States got Germany. involved in World War One. So had the United States yes. stayed out of World War One, one of the problems was the unity uh, involved in World War One that created the the problem of World War Two, at least in the Eastern uh, in the European theater. Had Woodrow Wilson kept his campaign promises and kept the United States out of World War One, there's a good argument that Hitler never would have rose to power and World War Two would not have happened. What do you think? No, I'd say it gave an opportunity for him to rise to power. It did. But How would it? Okay. Got there's it. always the economic problems and all that stuff, and uh, the treaty after World War I gave an opportunity for Hitler to rise. Yeah, it was the economic issues from the Treaty of Versailles that gave him the opportunity to rise. Thanks, yes. David, for your call tonight. 855-450 free. You can join us here on the radio on Free Talk Live on the live Saturday edition. Hour 3 is next. Warning. If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station because there's an alternative to bankruptcy and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, May 23rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.13 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,206 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. 
Antiwar.com reports weeks after seizing the North Syrian town of Jasir al Shakur, Al Qaeda's Nusra Front has finally managed to seize the town's hospital, which had been the last site held by Syrian forces who had been locked in it ever since. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that the hospital was overrun and that dozens of the soldiers had managed to flee, while others were either killed or captured. About 150 troops were believed to be inside at the start of the offensive. Al Qaeda and its allies have been seizing a significant statelet of their own across Syria's northwest, with Jasir al Shakur and the rest of the Idlib province the centerpiece. They have also been looking to expand further to the west, aiming to contest the Latakia coast, which is held by the Syrian military. While Idlib and Jasir al Shakur were held by the military, much of the rest of the province was held by smaller rebel factions, many of whom were pro US factions overrun by Al Qaeda. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports two jails in Mississippi routinely failed to provide prisoners with reasonable safety from violence, housed them in filthy conditions, and often kept them in custody long after their court-ordered release dates, that from a report from the Department of Justice. The Hines County Adult Detention Center in Raymond, Mississippi, and the Jackson City Detention Center in Jackson, Mississippi, violated the constitutional rights of its prisoners, according to the Federal Review. The Justice Department's review was sparked by ongoing violence at the jail. The report said, These incidents include at least three major riots, two alleged homicides, and numerous assaults on prisoners and staff members. They required closing entire housing units and transferring prisoners to other jurisdictions where they were difficult to locate by defense attorneys and court officials. Not only are the jails understaffed, the Raymond facility has an 80% vacancy rate, the Jackson facility is at 50, but they're also underqualified. The report said, Without adequate staffing, the jail cannot supervise prisoners prisoners, deter violence, or properly respond to emergencies. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeracy supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. Reuters reports China said on Friday it was strongly dissatisfied with a U.S. spy plane that flew over part of the South China Sea this week near where China is building artificial islands and called on the United States to stop such action or risk causing an accident. The U.S. flight on Wednesday was highlighted by the unusual Pentagon decision to invite a CNN team aboard the Poseidon surveillance plane. It said the Chinese Navy issued eight warnings to the aircraft to move away from the contested territory. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Hong Li Lee said the Chinese military drove away the aircraft in accordance with relevant regulations. He labeled the U.S. action a security threat to China's islands and reefs. He told a news conference, such action is likely to cause an accident. It is very irresponsible and dangerous and detrimental to regional peace and stability. We express our strong dissatisfaction. We urge the U.S. to strictly abide by international law and international rules and refrain from taking any risky and provocative actions. China will continue to closely monitor the the relevant area and take the necessary and appropriate measure to prevent harm to the safety of China's islands and reefs as well as any sea and air accidents. A Pentagon spokesman called the mission routine and said such flights occurred every few days. Colonel Steve Warren said the Poseidon had not gone within the 12-mile territorial limits that China claims around the artificial islands, but said this could happen in the future. The U.S. stance reflects the fact that while it does not recognize Chinese territorial limits around reclaimed land, it wants to avoid escalating the issue further than necessary. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Are you a helpless moron perplexed by the world? Wish there was a device that enabled you to consult the Onion Book of Known Knowledge anytime, anywhere? Then you need the Book Bjorn, the amazing new wearable invention that makes you and the Onion Book of Known Knowledge inseparable. 
Never again be stumped by the panoply of bizarre objects filling your field of vision. Never take it off. Never be without it. All this for just four easy payments of $39.93. The Book Bjorn. The Book Bjorn. The Book Bjorn. And if you call now, you'll receive the special page-turning wand. Turn pages with the greatest of ease. The special reading light to wrench knowledge from utter darkness. The book umbrella to protect the onion book of known knowledge's precious pages from the elements. Book, 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 book Bjorn. This $800 value can be yours today. Send a check or money order to The Book Bjorn, care of the Zweebel Center for Knowledge Studies, 15 Zweebel Way, Macau, China. Do not hesitate. Buy now. The Book Bjorn. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program here. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. We have been talking generally about the idea, in my opinion, the damaging idea of patriotism, an idea that blinds people to what's really going on, that you know allows people to remain comfortable uh, in a place where the people who are running things, the politicians in this case running the government, are absolutely just ruining life for people here in the United States. But yet people still continue to wave the flag, even though they can acknowledge at the same time that they don't like what some of the politicians are doing. Like when they're paying attention to the issues, they could decide, well, I don't agree with that. But at the same time, they still believe there's some value to the federal government. We were just talking with somebody about that uh, a moment ago. And I just don't personally, I don't see it. You know, I don't see the value with the federal government. What do they bring to your life that is of value? We know they take from you. We know they take value from you. They take your wealth every single year. They take your time uh, through obedience. You know, they make you uh, spend hours and hours on their taxes alone, let alone, you know, the regulations that you'd have to obey if you're in business. All of this takes time. It takes money. It takes effort uh, to comply with. And what's the benefit that you uh, perceive from that? Well, when you're talking about the federal government, I mean, I think that there are benefits. The question is, is do they outweigh the, uh, the you know, the, the reasons not to have it? And, no. Okay. Well, I, I understand where you come from, but like I should, it, it bears pointing out that if you buy a toaster in the United States and New Hampshire, you can move to California and plug that toaster in. If you buy a toaster in the United States and you move to uh, Europe, you cannot plug that toaster in. Because you mean because of the outlets? They've got 220 and they've got uh, their outlets are shaped yeah. differently and okay. um, you know di different countries have different things. Standardization has a certain level of value to it. Um, and the Can you take the toaster to Canada? I don't know the answer to that. I think I, you can. I, I think so, but yeah. you know that I'm not saying that the marketplace can't come up with some level of uh, of homogenization, but you can see that it, to some extent it can't, right? Like at this point, some some people drive on one side of the road, some people drive on the other, some people measure distance in miles, some people measure it in kilometers, some people uh, you know use a 24 hour clock, some people use a 12 hour clock. Mm -hmm. Like there's there so? hasn't been. These things haven't been sort of meted out, and there's okay. a value to variety, that. Variety is the spice of life. It, I don't know if it uh, – yeah, there's some things that I would like to be the same, but that the federal government hasn't created that uh, all over the world anyway. It's How do just you know the outlets? Particular... How do you know the outlet types weren't mandated by governments? I suspect they were. Okay, then. So they're standing in the way of the marketplace At this point, case. they're stuck – because um, it's unlikely that people are going to tear, you know, tear out their, um, you know, their electricity and change things over. That's true. Didn't the market come up with converters and things like that sure. to help make that easier? It sure did. To some extent. Let's go to Don, listening in Tallahassee to WVFT. Hey, Don. Hey, um, I uh, I'd like to weigh in on some of that. I think first of all, uh, some of your your problems and difficulties with accepting a federal government is the way that it's usurped its control over uh, the American government and the state governments because it was never designed that uh, they would uh, have such authority. The, the, the uh, powers were strictly delegated in the, in the first three articles of the Constitution, and, and that was where, that's where it's supposed to be. It's just the same thing like 
Well, that's family, the way I read it, and that's the way you read it. However, the way we read it doesn't really matter. The way five uh, people in black moo-moos in Washington, D.C. read it, those are the only ones that matter. Um, the way that the federal government was set up is, is that it doesn't really matter what legislation was, uh, or at least the way it has uh, been, turned out, is it doesn't matter what legislation's passed or what the president says. It matters what the Supreme Court says, and it only takes a majority in order for them to uh, to do things. So. Interesting. Well, not, not real. Yeah, you, you, well, actually, you, you're wrong. You're okay. right, and you're wrong in one sense because we've allowed it to happen. We've uh, we've allowed uh, we've we've franchised so many voters now that you can you can be on welfare and food stamps and subsidized housing and and still vote for more government theft from mm. the the other people who are paying the taxes. So. Uh, Do you really think that's our problem, is the people that are on welfare? I mean, I think that there's there's plenty of people that are paying taxes that uh, really don't understand what the value of a limited government is. Well, no, I mean, I'm not saying that's the only problem. I'm not even saying that's a major, the major problem. But the point is that if we ran our government uh, the way it, the founders intended it, now they had their disagreements, but basically – when, when the 13 uh, uh, states had ratified uh, in, in their uh, state conventions, and it was, you know, the federal government did not have all the authority that they've claimed right now. And even our, our current chief executive says, well, I've got a cell phone and a pen. I'm just going to issue uh, by edict uh, executive amnesty. And then, you know, and, and what is – what does the, the opposition party do? Pretty much lay down. Because well, they're I, just as bad. They're corrupt. Yeah, I, I, would, I don't disagree with these statements. The difficulty is, is that this is the government that the Constitution brought us. I mean, it is undeniable that the document, as it was written and it, as it is going to be implemented— And as has, interpreted. As it is interpreted, has brought us to today because this is the document we've got. Um, so I don't really – I don't understand, personally cannot figure out how one can write down on pieces of paper um, a federal government that would be limited because that's what they tried to do and they failed. Well, I mean, keep in mind, how long has this taken? It's taken two centuries to yep. really corrupt the document. But, you know, let me give you, you know, something to, to at least think about before you, you uh, cut me off and, uh, is – you know, you don't want to accept anything like um, a conspiracy theory, but uh, Karl Marx wrote a platform, a 10-plank platform for taking over developed nations. We have adopted every one of those platforms. We have a a, a, a community organizer who is a thorough Marxist was, uh, uh, you know— We had done that— raised- we, hold on. We read the Communist Manifesto's uh, Ten Planks on the air when George Bush was in charge, and we came to the conclusion that at the very least, 8.5 of them are fully implemented. Yeah. So yeah, it ain't oh, well, a community well, organizer. It's the Republicans as well as the Democrats. Well, well, no, no, no. Hey, first of all, I'm not I'm not an apologist for George Bush and Republicans. I'm okay, good much, to know. Uh, but, hey, I was, I was uh, espousing uh, conservative and libertarian principles when you were in three-cornered pants. So don't, you know, three-cornered uh, pants? Oh, yes, yes. yes. What I'm, are those? I'm a little bit older than you. And, uh, what are three-cornered and I can, pants? I can, I say, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you were in Huggies or something I, I, like that. Oh, what I I'm see. Oh, I, they're they're uh, fabric diapers. Oh, well, okay. Well, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know what three-cornered pants are. I've never heard the term. Uh, those are the old-fashioned diapers uh, before they came out with disposables. But mm-hmm. the point I suspect I was in disposables is, would be my guess. Okay. The, the point I'm trying to make is, uh, you know, a, a group of very shrewd, wealthy men got together, you know, and uh, like I said, you don't have to believe in, in conspiracy. But all conspiracy, you wouldn't deny the, the existence of the mafia. All a conspiracy says were two or more people gathered yeah. together. Oh, I believe there are conspiracies, and there certainly uh, is a conspiracy to control people and uh, and indoctrinate them. I think that was the conspiracy of those people that put together that document, too. Don, thanks for your call, man. I do appreciate hearing from you tonight. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. All the politicians that came after the politicians that uh, fought the Revolutionary War, those are the corrupt politicians. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got Jason. He's in Virginia listening to WLNI. Hey, Jason. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted you guys to elaborate on what you said earlier about um, the United States 
being the reason for ISIS, knowing that a radical Muslim was operating in uh, the Middle East well before America ever even was over there, and the fact that when they actually left, or when America left the Middle East, is when that even gave them the chance to Hold up. When did America leave the Middle East? Well, I mean, recently when we've been pulling troops out. Well, I can tell you that, uh, you know, this Saddam Hussein surely, certainly wasn't going to give over a portion of his country to um, to ISIS, right? Like ISIS came out of, uh, of, of Syria, and they wouldn't have gotten anywhere in uh, Saddam's uh, Iraq, right? Um, I mean, there's no way to ever know that because, I mean, he, I mean, he was supporting... But, but you Muslims. do know who's responsible for deposing him, so therefore you can say who's responsible for it. Stand by, Jason. We'll bring you back for the discussion here in moments. Would ISIS exist without U.S. meddling around the world in the Middle East? 855 450 free. Share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. You've helped make Lumber Liquidators North America's largest specialty retailer of hardwood flooring. To say thanks, we've made unbelievable price cuts on top quality floors at our customer appreciation sale. It's your chance to get refinished hardwood for just 99 cents and hand scraped acacia hardwood for $2.99. That's half of what you'd pay at other stores. Plus deals on 400 beautiful floors, including quality laminate from 49 cents and 24 months special financing. You trust our value. We value your trust. So get to the customer appreciation sale today. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And Granger's got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from, in stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, un emotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. 
For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition continuing now with Ian in the studio with you. And Mark. And you can join us here on the phone lines at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, although the phones are loaded up. However, I don't think we've had a single Skype call tonight. If you want to join us on Skype, you can dial in there over at uh, username lrn.fm. You do have to send a contact request first. Once we see that come in, we'll approve it. And then once you're approved, you're good to go to call us on Skype from that point forward. So, again, don't forget to use Skype if you got it at username lrn.fm. I am going to the world's largest gathering of free minds. It's called Freedom Fest, and it will be July the 8th through the 11th at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. It's a lot of fun. Uh, as you can imagine, most things in Vegas tend to be. Uh, this year it's called The New American Dream. And not only is this the biggest gathering and has been for some time, but this one is bigger and more epic than ever. So um, this, what they're calling it is the historic dream debate of the century. That's the big draw here. Uh, Paul Krugman versus Steve Moore. Steve Moore is the Wall Street Journal a columnist and chief, chief economist for the Heritage Foundation. He's the conservative guy. And Paul Krugman is the Nobel Prize winning economist and the uh, New York Times columnist. And they're going to debate austerity versus stimulus, red state versus blue state, flat tax versus progressive tax. If you're interested in really hearing both sides, this is going to be there's nothing like this, from what I can tell, nothing like this has ever happened before. I'm really excited about this, and it's only happening at Freedom Fest. There'll be lots of other big names there, Steve Forbes, uh, Peter Thiel, uh, Steve Wynn, Janesh D'Souza, Glenn Beck, uh, M Senator Mike Lee, Grover Norquist, uh, Congressman Alan West, George Gilder. The, the names just keep going on and on. Mark Skelson and his beautiful wife set the event up, and I'm excited if you want to come out and you know see it all with me. They have this huge vendor area, too. See it all with me. Go to freedomfest.com. Click that you heard it on the radio because that's how we get credit for it. So uh, freedomfest.com, click that you heard it on the radio, or you can call them and mention Free Talk Live. 855-850-FREE. 855-850-FREE is their number, freedomfest.com. All right. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Well, let's go back to Jason in Virginia, you're back on Free Talk Live, Jason. You were calling in to talk about ISIS, sort of its origins, and you know, would ISIS exist without the U.S. government meddling and you know, killing people and blowing things up in the Middle East? Uh, are you back with us there? Yeah. So, is your contention that ISIS would exist without the U.S. government? Had the U.S. government not gone over and over the last several decades? Uh, meddled in the Middle East, you would say that ISIS would still exist? Is that your argument? Uh, yeah, just because, um, I mean, basically groups like them were operating before the U.S. was even over there. Um, when was that? Through, when are we talking like about? Al-Qaeda. Well, Al-Qaeda, the, Al the U.S. has been, um, <laughs> the U.S. deposed, uh, put in the Shah of, in uh, Iran. I mean, the U.S. has been involved in the Middle East since at least the 40s. So, well, back to ISIS. How did well, but the US it's really ISIS? important to know the history of radicalization. Like, there's a reason that we use the term radicalization. It's because that there's pressures, both interior and exterior, that cause radicalization. The United States, uh, flexing its muscles in the Middle East and Western governments generally, have caused people who live there to kind of feel like, hey, we get no opportunity to rule ourselves. That you know, these uh, these people are put in power over us. We don't have the ability to decide who's going to be our rulers and who isn't. And that makes, I mean, you know, if there's <laughs> if there's a guy ruling over you and he's got an army, you know, and that army's uh, foreign, then maybe you want to get the foreigners out so that then you can depose your government, right? So you're saying that the Quran, which says that they should kill people who oppose them, cut off their heads, that they should, um, that they shouldn't be scared to kill people because they're scared of something that's good for them. 
that they should work to get all of the regions back so that they could start the return. That has nothing to do with their radical their radicalizing. Have you read the Quran? I mean, I've studied it well enough to know that that you would say that a Christian is a Christian because of the people that and the religion that they're raised up in, and they're the same way because of the religion and the people that they were raised around, and that's what they focus on when they operate every day. They don't care. I mean, the United States is not just another opportunity for them. It has nothing to do with what they choose to do each day. How do you study the Quran without actually reading it? I mean, I listen to lots of news about it. Uh, is the news follow, or is the news about the Quran that you're listening to on talk radio? Uh, talk radio, um, the internet, mm -hmm. uh, television. Mm -hmm. I've very so, involved in news, following what's going on, following what people are doing. Yeah, so I mean, taking people. excerpts from the Quran and acting as though that's it means something isn't really, I don't think, very accurate. So I have read the Quran. I read it while I was in jail for civil disobedience, and further, I did other study about the Quran as well. We've actually had uh, some Muslims on the air with us here from Muslims for Liberty. We've had Will Cauley on to field. He was on one of our Saturday shows, and he fielded questions for three hours straight. The segment that you just mentioned of the cutting off of the heads and all that, um, I you know I don't remember exactly what the context was because I don't you know have an intimate familiarity with the Quran, but I do know that there were times when the uh, the uh, Muhammad and his followers were being attacked, and they were by God's will or whatever allowed to defend themselves against the attackers. But God made it clear to Muhammad that when the attackers turn around and retreat that they were not to go after them, that they were not to continue to pursue that fight, that they were to end the conflict there. Does that sound like the Quran that you learned about on talk radio? That sounds about the Quran that Muslims follow, not radical Muslims. Okay, good point. You're right, because there are differences between regular Muslims and the radical ones. I'm glad you're able to see that that's the case. So back to the issue with ISIS— um, I've got a story here from truthandmedia.com, Ben Swan's site. He interviews Angela Keaton, who we've had on this show, from antiwar.com. She points out that ISIS is entirely a creation of the United States' behavior in Iraq. She says that it's it, that's how we got to where we are, because of war, because of occupation, because of torture. The U.S. government completely destabilized and wrecked Iraq. They caused it to fail miserably, and that's entirely the fault of the U.S. government. There is no one else to blame. Uh, Swan goes on to say that uh, when the U.S. first invaded Iraq, it blew the country apart by destroying the existing government, toppling Saddam Hussein, and destroying the infrastructure. They left behind a power vacuum that never would have existed under Hussein. Now, you the power vacuum is really important. Right. Now, you speculated, Jason, that had Hussein not been gotten rid of, that maybe ISIS would have come about anyway and challenged him. And maybe that would be the case. Obviously, we don't know what that alternate world would look like. But one thing's for sure, if the U.S. government wasn't over there causing all this destabilization and political favoritism and putting you know puppets in power, then it would really likely— Well, 9-11 wouldn't have happened. That's true. And <laughs> also, and also, ISIS wouldn't really probably be concerned with the U.S. government and the United States and what's going on over here because, you know, in the same way they're that not they're not— a threat. Cons it, right. In the same way that ISIS isn't concerned with, uh, you know, uh, South Korea— or they're not concerned with Switzerland, for instance, because they're not over there killing people in the Middle East. It it sounds too elaborate for someone who's on ISIS to even consider those as factors, more so than the fact that they just want to follow the Quran the way they see it. Um, well, sure, they want to do that. There's like no doubt about that. But if you're standing over there shooting at them, then they're, they're going gonna to shoot back. Yeah, they're going to target you. <laughs> Thanks, Jason, for the call tonight. It's called Blowback. There's been books written about that. In fact, I think that's the name of one of the books. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, you blame America. Why not? 855 450 free. What other hegemony is there in the world? It's Katie Armour's 15% off sale now through Memorial Day. All Katie Armour is now 15% off. Katie's all new level four body armor is made in the USA and can withstand the toughest of rifle rounds. Why would you buy anything else? That's Katie Armour's 15% off sale now through Memorial Day. Get your level four body armor while you still can. Go to katiearmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. 
Come and take it. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Free Talk Live. Yeah, you know, this would work if there was no government and everything worked the right Communism way. requires central control. There's evidence that the free market works. The marketplace is what has created all of the wondrous things that we have and take for granted in this world. The marketplace is what brings us air conditioning, grocery stores, the internet, all the things that you enjoy, your cell phone, all the things you take for granted. That's not as a result of government. Government slows down and impedes the market. Government restricts freedom and it restricts the marketplace. So, you know, there's evidence that the freer a market is. Look at the computer industry, for instance. The more free and the less regulated a market is, the better the innovation, the better the competition, the better the prices, and the better the quality of the products and the services. I mean, we've got evidence to prove that our economic model is sound. And look at all the wealthy people that the computer industry has created. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Talk Live. You're welcome to join us here on the Radio Waves on this live Saturday edition. Joining you in studio, Ian here. And Mark. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there on the site. If you like the show and you would like to help support Free Talk Live, then you should become an amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is you send five bucks a month into Free Talk Live with any major credit card through PayPal, or you can use Visa or MasterCard on our website. Uh, you send five bucks a month. We take that in and invest it into getting on more radio stations by marketing the show more effectively to those radio stations. We've got over 150 stations right now, which is pretty darn good uh, for an independent show like ours. That there's nothing like uh, they've got conservative stations. They've got liberal stations. There are no stations. You know, libertarian stations like Free Talk Live. Well, there was one station in Boston claiming to be libertarian, but they didn't put very many libertarian shows on. <laughs> well, um, good for them. Because there aren't very many libertarian shows. There's uh, Freedom Fiends is doing a pretty good job, but you know they don't have as, uh, as many affiliates as we do. They haven't been at it for quite as long. 
Um, so if you want to help us out, please go to amp.freetalklive.com. That's A-M-P amp.freetalklive.com, and you will get perks as well, like access to our AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only podcast, and the AMP-only Facebook group, which is a super cool group. A lot of people are having fun in that group. Lots of uh, debates and discussions going on in there. Yeah, so, you want to be part of the club. That's right. It's amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Joe. He's in Grand Rapids. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Joe. Yeah, next time you think you're free, check out the national debt. Um, yeah. Was it 18 trillion, 19, and thereabouts? And growing. Liabilities are 200, what, 200 trillion or something? Yeah, something like that. But who's counting? Oh, they've enslaved us, and I'm telling you, this is the issue. It's all these other little things that people argue about. They, they're meaningless compared to the national debt. Yeah, and people I think this really is the issue, and when you say enslavement, um, I, I want people to really understand. Slavery has a long history, and it changed and morphed depending on the different uh, geographic periods and time periods and uh, geographic areas and time periods and th those sorts of things. And maybe citizenship is just the new slavery. Maybe it's a free-range serfdom, because if the government claims that it's going to pay back uh, really, more like two hundred trillion. Uh, but that's what he said. Let's call it uh, nineteen trillion. Um, you know, just for because that's that's the number that most people agree on. If they're going to pay back nineteen trillion dollars, how are they going to do it? Can't be done. Well, the answer no, is is that they're going nobody... to tax us. They're going to tax us to be able to pay at least the interest, and that taxation is claiming a portion of the fruits of your labor. Well, that's what you do to a slave: is you take a portion of the fruits of their labor, mm -hmm. usually a large portion, um, and that's what they're doing. I mean, they're claiming your body, they're claiming your land, because they'll also tax your house, too. Yeah, and um, nobody went to jail for it. Nobody's nobody's paid the price for it. Um, it's outrageous. It's absolutely... The no, people. it's business as usual. I mean, why would they put themselves in jail, right? This is how they, how they do things. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. They're making millions of dollars, and, I mean, these politicians and... <laughs> All these preemptive bribes that Hillary Clinton's been doing, Obama, all these guys, every one of them, both parties, they've all done it. They go up there and they leave millionaires. And it's, you know, the Great Depression was 25% unemployment, I think, mm -hmm. something like that. That's going to be nothing when this when this collapses. Well, you know, there are things we can do about this, right? So I don't like the idea that, you know, we somehow owe this. I don't know it. I didn't make those agreements, right? Like, the, I did not agree to spend that money. I am not part of this. I, if I'm part of it, it's involuntary, right? Because they're forcing me to some extent to be a part of it. Um, but I don't want to pay, and I don't pay federal income taxes. I have no interest in supporting this tyrannical system, and I, you know, I'm no going to I. take the steps necessary to not do that. But further, one of the ways that we can protect ourselves from the inevitable continual debasement of the currency, which is a, a debt-based currency. So if they were to ever pay that $19 trillion off, all the money would go away. So that's just the way the, the money system works here. It's a crazy debt-based system. You can uh, insulate yourself by doing things like getting alternative currencies. So gold and silver are, of course, great options. You can go to silver.freetalklive.com, and you can purchase silver and gold through Midas Resources, which is uh, a great company that we've been working with for a long time. They're actually the company that helps syndicate our radio program. And then Bitcoin as well, another great, uh, more, I think, really one of the most important alternative currencies out there because it's international, it's easy to use, it's easy to send, it costs next to zero to send money anyone to anyone anywhere in the world uh, with Bitcoin. And the more that we can take our value out of the U.S. dollar and put it into other things, the more insulated we are from the manipulation of the U.S. dollar as uh, as a currency. So I would highly recommend to people out there, and you know, Joe, I'm presuming you already know about some of this stuff, but uh, to, yeah. to other people listening, look into these things as alternatives. They're great ways to protect yourself uh, against the continuing ravages of inflation. And thanks, Joe, for your call and the thoughts tonight here. And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, go to weusecoins.com. And if you decide to get some Bitcoin, you should go to expresscoin.com. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Brock is listening in Conway, South Carolina, to WRNN. Hey, Brock. Yes, sir. Hey, you're yeah, on the air. I'd like to ask you a question real quick. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, in reference to um, the ISIS problem and the overseas third world nation problem in general, uh, we all know that our presence over there is uh, exasperating uh, their efforts to harm us. What is your solution to removing our troops? 
and uh, our uh, um, uh, sites over there to eliminate the problem. Well, I mean, if 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 I got to be president and you know, like chief executive or something like that, the unlikely circumstance where somebody puts me in charge of the government, somebody who doesn't like the government, um, I would suggest that you put every U.S. Uh, military person on the first thing that uh, produces smoke and uh, send them back to the United States um, where they can actually defend something as the Department of Defense. Um, you know, tell the uh, the allies, hey, you know, we sold you a lot of stuff. Good luck with it. And uh, tell the people that, uh, you know, may have a problem. You know what? Upon reconsidering, we've decided that this isn't our business, and we apologize for any inconvenience that we've uh, we've caused you. Now, good luck with your lives. You're responsible for your own uh, government here. We are not going to be responsible anymore. And then go back to the United States and do what you do. I agree wholeheartedly, completely. We need to have those defenses in our country, not in someone else's country. But politics uh, makes us have to have uh, um, forces over there. We have to have bases over there. No, you don't. Politics, uh, how does politics make you do it? That's I, you know, Rather than um, saying no, I want to know how. How does politics? No. Um, it's, it's negotiating between countries. Yep. That's all it is. That's so, all it boils down right. to, really. But that's like not Saudi necessary. Arabia, like Saudi not Arabian kings. Between countries, you know, you're not willing to negotiate to anybody. There's no reason to, to do that. Whatever negotiating you're talking about is government to government. The government should stay the hell out of other governments around the world, and the U.S. government, if it's going to exist, should stay neutral. And then any negotiation that goes on should be business to business. You should be free to do business with whoever you want around the world, and you don't need military bases around the world to protect your right to do business with people who want to do business with you. It's all completely unnecessary, and it just can, it just grows the power of the state. I agree. I Thanks, agree Brock, now, for your call but... tonight, man. I appreciate it. Let's continue here. We've got uh, J J James in Kalamazoo, Michigan, listening via TuneIn. Hello, James. Uh, Ian, Mark, um, another good show. Thanks. Go um, ahead. I just wanted to um, bring up, uh, first off, I, I'm neither a patriot of the U.S. government or my state of Michigan, um, as uh, Teresa, who called earlier, was. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, which is this is a way that I try to explain the federal government to friends that I'm trying to explain it to, is it's like a rebellious adolescent you know essentially the state made the federal government that's like two parents coming together to make a child hmm. the child growing up and trying to tell the parents what to do yeah and, and in many ways uh, it's similar to that yeah except yeah, this that's, child that's has I... grown up into a hulking uh mass that can easily crush its parents under its pinky finger mm. thanks for the call tonight james more coming up here in moments 855 450 free we have enough time maybe for you also you can join us on skype at skype username lrn.fm the remaining moments of free talk live for this live saturday edition are next dvd books music instruments periodicals computers software electronics photo cell phone office products home and garden bed and bath furniture kitchen pet supplies automotive hardware apparel shoes jewelry grocery healthcare, sports and outdoors toys games used and more it's a department store at your fingertips shop.freetalklive.com get all your shopping done get a great deal and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit free talk live when you enter amazon via shop.freetalklive.com Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I've found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar. If you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back because this stuff works. Australian Dream is available at Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Walmart, Target, and other drugstores and supermarkets everywhere. Are you suffering from EP? 
The symptoms include fraudulent charges to your credit card. Your subway card says it's empty, but you bought it yesterday. Someone's been in your hotel room, but the desk clerk says they only show you entering the room. These are signs of EP. Electronic pickpocketing. Payment cards, transit cards, even hotel room keys. Use a radio chip so you can just wave your card at the register, the turnstile, or your hotel room door. But what's convenient for you is also convenient for thieves. Waving scanners to electronically pickpocket you without even touching you. The good news is there's a cure. ID Stronghold has created leather wallets and clutches that have built-in EP protection. Layers of shielding material cleverly concealed in a beautiful leather wallet that stops the symptoms of EP. Go to IDStronghold.com now and get the cure. IDStronghold.com. Warning, ID Stronghold wallets could lead to feelings of safety and security, comfort in crowds, and euphoria. If you experience these emotions, immediately inform your friends and family about IDStronghold.com so they can feel better too. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time, call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for you if you join us here right now at 855-450 free or Skype in at username lrn.fm. Lots of talk tonight about uh, the military and patriotism and some really tough questions that uh, we've been discussing here. You can share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind with you tonight, Ian. And Mark. And join us online at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live is brought to you by Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. You can go and check it out at victimlesscrimespree.com. It is a feature-length documentary film focusing on one year's worth of some of the activism that happened up here in New Hampshire in the Keene area uh, with early movers here for the Free State Project. Go to victimlesscrimespree.com. And if you haven't yet signed up for the Free State Project and you love liberty, you care about freedom, you want to see more freedom in our lifetime, and you're willing to actually do something about it, then go and learn more at freestateproject.org. In fact, Porkfest is coming up. It's going to be here in four weeks. The Porcupine Freedom Festival. The Porcupine Freedom Festival is a yearly camping festival with at least 1,500 people attending it over the entire week here in New Hampshire. It happens in northern New Hampshire, a place called Lancaster at Rogers Campground, and we're there broadcasting live every single year. We have a great pleasure of being a part of the event in that way. And I'm looking forward to it again this year. Of course, we'll oh, yeah. be talking about it more as the time comes up, but it's not too late to get your tickets at porkfest.com. Let's go to the phones and the fun where we've got Daniel in Mobile listening to WAPH. Hey, Daniel. Hey there. Hey, you're on the air. <laughs> Personally, I'm a big fan of Larkin Rose. Oh, cool. And his ideas, but even more than them, I'm a fan of the late, great Russell Means. 
Yeah, the uh, the American Indian uh, freedom activist, libertarian. Exactly, and he had a statement that sums up everything in my mind as far as government, the people, the state, whole nine yards. He said that freedom is the right to take responsibility for your own actions. Yeah, it's and certainly important. The reason this is so important to me is because it puts everything else in perspective. Government has absolutely no function beyond assuming responsibilities on behalf of the people. But the trouble is that when it assumes those responsibilities, the payment, just like with capitalism, which everybody hates for some reason these days, but the system is the same. <clears throat> in exchange for those responsibilities, we lose freedom. Yep. The more responsibility we take, the more freedom we have. And so that's the capital. That's how the capital exchange is established between the people and this superstition of government. It's Like you said, it, it is an organization, but it's deifying itself through the exchange of the metaphysical exchange of freedom for responsibility. Yeah, I'd say that's right on. And there's no amount of responsibility that they're not willing to take. They're constantly grabbing for more of it. They would be happy uh, if you would allow them to take care of you from cradle to grave, so long as you do what you're told. Yeah, well, they're not going to take very good care of you from cradle to grave. Nope. Good yeah, points tonight, and, Daniel. Uh, Anything else you want to share? Uh, just one other thing, that this metaphysical exchange is also the importance of debt. What the do you mean? exact same system is in, is in place there. They you, want to create the impression upon the people that we owe them something. Hmm. They took from us, yeah. and yet they want to instill upon the people the concept that we owe them, even though we're not the ones who bartered all these things for which we've seen absolutely no return. You got it, Daniel. Great call tonight, man. Really, really good thoughts. I appreciate it a lot. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Mike. He's in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, um, I went to March Against Monsanto today. And tell me about it. I guess it probably didn't make – tell me about it. Um, we, we usually go – I used to live in Philadelphia area, and we went down there to the one in Philadelphia. It was really big. But we went to Fargo today. And stood out on a bridge. I'm not sure what even road it was on, but we tried to get the people aware that uh, Monsanto is, uh, you know, putting out neonicotide pesticides and killing the bee population, uh, along with other companies. It's not just exclusively them, and uh, enslaving farmers with their, you know, genetically modified seeds and uh, genetically modified foods that some independent tests have proven to show. Uh, are not good for you, are not healthy. And uh, When you say farmers are enslaved, it seems like most of them just sort of sign up of their own accord. Farmers sign up for, you know what, a lot of them do. I work with some men who are farmers, and they believe that it is a salvation for them as far as financial. They don't, they don't have the education that they need to see that organic or non-GMO seeds can be profitable. I, when I lived in Pennsylvania and I had just moved out to the Midwest, I knew farmers who did organic farming and they made a profit. It in the is Midwest? Possible. In the in the I Midwest. Moved to the Midwest, yes, okay. from the See, Philadelphia area. One of the thing, one of the things that I, what I, the only, you know, the only education I have is locally, and it's really difficult to make uh, money in regular farming in New Hampshire because you have to compete against people who have, you know. 10 deep, beautiful feet of black soil in Iowa to grow things. Here so, it's all full of rocks. Right, right. You've got rocky soil to uh, to compete with, um, you know, for, with here in New Hampshire. So your, your assets are low, but you have a real base of people who want, uh, you know, free range. They want uh, sustainably raised. They want humanely raised. They want every buzzword that comes out of food possible, um, organic or whatever. Right. And so those right. people. Now, here's now. They don't know that. Right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tell you off. No problem at all. Yeah, those people will pay. From I've gone to farms and I've seen hams at twelve dollars a pound, um, and you know yeah. these are 
every every little thing that you're going to call them organic, sustainably raised, uh, you know, in, independent, whatever's um, the whole deal. And you know, so farmers can make it when they're selling their hams at t- you know their their ham at uh, twelve dollars a pound. They can they can they can run a farm that way. Um, but sure. it, it can I would think it would be difficult if you were out in the Midwest to compete um, because well, basically everybody around you is a farmer too. Right. Right. But we need to raise awareness of it. You have a 40 percent decrease in the population of bees. And without bees, you're not going to have other kinds of food. You know, you can't just live on wheat and corn. You're going to need bees. So yep. like it or not, we have to do something about the genetically modified food and bees the are a huge issue. that it requires. Yeah. And it's not just it it's not just the Monsanto stuff um, that the, the bees are involved with. But uh, I recently stopped using diatomaceous earth, which is completely organic. Um, but. I, the reason I stopped using it as a uh, for, on my pigs to uh, prevent them from getting you know just the sort of parasites and pests that they get mm-hmm. um, was because huh, turns out that if uh, you know the the diatomaceous earth that kills the little insects well it kills bees too so I stopped oh. using it uh, in its dry form I still put it in their food. Hey Mike, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. I I gotta say I'm not convinced that gen- genetically modified food is necessarily a bad thing. But I don't like the idea that the Monsanto Corporation is essentially able to patent uh, seeds and things like that and then use the force of the state to go after people who, like, you know, we've heard stories of, like, the wind blowing uh, through one farm and then depositing seeds from these uh, plants on another plot of land and then monsanto will sue that other farmer for using their seeds without a patent it's been a while since we've heard those stories because monsanto lost them uh those cases Did but they? the fact is is when you make these roundup ready uh crops and then farmers and encourage farmers to use your product roundup mm-hmm. to spray on the crops in order to you know keep uh, weeds from coming up and that kind of thing you need to consider where does that roundup go where do these herbicides go when to the, the rain falls somewhere. right then they go they go down to mississippi um, the Mississippi is a huge. Uh, when, when you look at all the area that uh, that drains in the Mississippi, it's gigantic. It goes down. Uh, there's a dead area where there's no fish, no life at all, the size of New Jersey. But Mark, don't we need the government to help stop that? I don't understand. Like, the government is what's caused it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Shane on the line in Charleston, West Virginia. Hello, Shane. You're on the air. Hey guys, I, I listen to you on podcast. I'm a couple weeks behind, so I have. Uh, got to hear what you've had to say about Cantwell. But, um, this is Chris Cantwell, who yeah, is our Wednesday a, night co host. He's, he's currently being suspended from Free Talk Live. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, I just, I just can't believe that y'all bailed on a co host and a friend so quickly for something he put in on his own private Twitter feed. Well, it's not private. Uh, Twitter is uh, is open to the public to read, and uh, he put the uh, he put the N word on his Twitter feed, and that can have consequences that can be very very devastating to radio shows. I don't believe that Chris is a racist. I don't believe that about him at all because he is my friend, and I have conversations with him off the air. And in fact, I saw him today, and I saw him last night, and the night and the night before that. So Chris Cantwell is still my friend, and he will continue to be my friend, whether or not he's on the air on Free Talk Live. But we have to do what we need to do to protect our advertisers and our radio stations and chris understands that yeah and he's he has the opportunity to uh, apologize and you know he doesn't want to yeah and at least well he did apologize mark he apologized, he apologized to for us. the inconvenience that he caused us and he has said that he would think twice about doing that again uh, in the future so if you've got more well, you're welcome to call us on another night shane but we're out of time for tonight so thank, you, thank for you for the call, call really be back tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. 
Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc. As in Creative Commons. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notified.